theory. And Mola. What's the situation? And me. Yeah. Yeah. And me. Still haven't recorded that. That's my just bad. send me just send me it on uh on Discord. <laughs> it's a very I, I need well to record it first, but I will. It's gonna take a while to record that. We're gonna need a few versions to make sure. You know, I'm just gonna yeah. say uh, should I just say and me? And you me. Could say, you could say and me, or you could or you could say and Ryan. I think it would be funny if you go and fucking Ryan. That would be funny. We would it demonetize every stream. <laughs> it will in the first ten seconds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Worth it. It's people's super chats that make this stream monetize. That's true. What's up, guys? How you doing? Welcome back to you know the Monday Star Grift. Today we're gonna be talking about a bunch of different stuff in Star Wars. Uh, primarily the Bad Batch episode that just came out, which was uh, Mahler's absolute favorite, and mm -hmm. Ryan adored it. Um, and then, uh, did you guys see my video that I put out today? Which one? So, uh, I know someone that works very closely with EA, and uh, the reason that the Mandalorian game got cancelled isn't necessarily, according to them, because of EA. It's because Disney wanted out. So they charged an extra 11% on top of these Star Wars games. So EA's like, screw this, we're done. So they canceled the Mandalorian game, and then potentially will be canceling any further Star Wars games too. So now I, all Star Wars games are at, at risk, according to them. I still think they're going to move forward with uh, Jedi Three, whatever they end up titling that. Yeah, yeah um, just because that's kind of proven to be a. They probably got a lot of money into it already, and they probably yeah. feel like it's reasonably successful for them to go for it. But yeah, the old uh, the Mandalorian game that got leaked a week and a half uh, before it got canceled. Yeah. So, which uh, there was, I mean, there were some people that you know wanted, were looking forward to that. To me, it sounded like essentially Django Fett bounty hunter uh, remade for a mo for a, like a modern gaming era. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. kind of what it sounded like to me, except you get first person. And yeah. in reality, if you can make the story work and do something with that, that would be kind of cool. But uh, It'd be awesome. Not not gonna happen. Another another Star Wars disappointment. <laughs> Did you three hear about the Star Wars chili commercials? No. Um, no. What's tell. going on in Chile? Chile. Mahler, do your American accent for the whole stream. No. No. It would drive them nuts. So what do you guys think of the episode? um i feel like it's it's kind of back to uh back to basics for the type of bad batch which is just kind of like a, a a filler episode that's you know pretty simplistic there's some kind of crazy things going on like a 13 year old gambling and in a bar and everybody just like <laughs> everybody just watching it happen uh man the street urchins are getting paid off a lot of freaking money Asking yeah. for 10,000 credits. Me and Maul were actually talking about this a little before stream. And, you know, Luke sold his used land speeder for 2,000 credits in A New Hope. This kid's asking for five used land speeders. Say which way a dog went. <laughs> yeah. It's to tell him which way a dog went. When reality, I think Mahler brought it up. The crosshair would beat the shit out of that little kid. Oh, yeah. It would have been so funny. Yeah. And, you what know, if you want to end about the reuniting yeah what do you think's gonna happen i think they're all gonna fight no no i don't think so i think that it's gonna be like him he's the one that did this to us omega how could you help blah blah blah, blah. and it's gonna be yeah. like omega's gonna be like well guys we're all brothers you're all on the same team <laughs> and everyone's gonna listen to omega because that's what this show's really all about everyone listening to omega at every opportunity <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good you should try it for the show I think D. Bradley Baker's got it cornered. Uh, he <laughs> literally does every fucking voice in the entire episode, except yeah. whoever the girl is. So I yeah, don't want to take away her job. role. No. I would yeah, never was... want to do that. I respect women. We've been over that multiple times on this stream. I would never want to take Lies. a job away from a nice young voice actor, actress. Good. That's, that's great. That's um, what I'm supposed to say that, right? So you told me in the pre-show notes. Don't yeah, say very good. about women. All right, good. Very good job. Yeah, yeah, you're uh you're gonna stick around for sure mm -hmm. um you could up it a little bit too maybe kiss ass a little more but just okay. pay extra for that <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know if that's in the contract <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, yeah, it was filler up until the fact that they met. And then, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. Because it's like... I was a little surprised they united him that quick. I thought it would take a little more effort than just to message and land on a random moon. Yeah, like they're moving quick now. So it's great because usually they move, you know, snail speed. So... I... The, the one thing I do enjoy watching this show, like, definitively is Crosshair because he just fucking hates everyone and everything. And I wish he'd like, actually take out his rage at more people. That's what I would like to see is Crosshair just... Yeah, he's like, he's like held back. Head. Yeah. Rofin Quackenboss. <laughs> it's one of the most entertaining panels I've seen for a live show. Keep up the great work and conversation, you three. Well, thank you. Will do. Um, thank you very I... much. I think a lot of people come at this from how good is this compared to how bad it's been and how good is it for a just whatever middle of the run season episode of something that can keep me awake slash entertained. Uh, I'm trying to come at it from just how good it could be and how good I think it is as a story. And just uh, as with the first three, it's just it's just eh. like they don't do a particularly good job, even with the components they're using at the time. Obviously, the formula, right? Like two characters being shoved together that are almost complete opposites having to solve a problem with different points of view and then both mm-hmm. of them having valid results and then they get out like i think yeah. what ryan means when he says it's filler is that this could you know it's almost like self-contained you could have skipped from the previous one to the next one in a way oh you yeah. would have you know which is because some people like are upset by that moniker it's like it's not necessarily a problem it's just sort of telling us what it is which is what it is there's loads of filler episodes of tv that i love um, yeah, and when you're doing this, when you have this type of weekly release, which I don't think Bad Batch should be a weekly release, I no. don't think it's that type of show. I think they should probably just dump it all. Um, because I, I just I don't think very many people are tuning in every week to watch Bad Batch, like from a number standpoint. Yeah. Um, and because you are going to get a good number of, of you know, for lack of a better term, filler episodes when it comes yep. to it. So, I think it should be all dropped. But sorry, go ahead, Mahler. Oh, just the like broadly speaking, a lot of the biggest things that happen in this episode are based on pretty weak bullshit. Like, not none of it happens if several decisions just randomly don't get made. One of those I thought was funny right at the beginning is it's only once they crash land that Omega's like, "Oh no, we left the other prisoners behind." I was like, "Why the <laughs> why the fuck did you bring that up at any other point? What the hell?" Like, <laughs> and obviously she brings it up then so that he could be like, "You know, oh, there's nothing we can do from now. We got to move on." Blah, blah blah. Just like, yeah, that's fair. But then I was like, wait. Why didn't she just release all of the prisoners? It would have just taken one swipe on the data pad. Yeah, right? I don't like. And I was like, yeah, man, I wasn't even yeah. thinking about that until she brought up how they abandoned all of them. I was like, yeah, I guess you did. But like, <laughs> I feel like Omega is the kind of character that would have foolishly let them out. You know what I mean? They go, oh, uh, I accidentally let everyone out. Well, not just that, but like she let. They're our brothers, go. Crosshair. Of course we need to let them all out. Well, and, um, I'm assuming Bad Batch is willing to go to this place, but what if she let them out and then a lot of them got shot? And, you know, Crosshair has to tell her, like, you shouldn't have fucking let them out because they had a chance. Like, yeah, they would have been captured and, you know, at least they had a chance, but letting them out meant that they had to kill them. Or, some, you know, just something that she has to deal with like that. I don't know if that's too dark, but at the very least, they probably should have dealt with that a bit better. They do need something like that. And they almost kind of had it in this episode where basically Crosshair is just following around Omega doing whatever she wants the entire time. Yeah, that, <laughs> Which that is... wasn't believable. But Oh, yeah. Th- so this is the other thing. Crosshair, um, I do like him the most, but like he's he's losing he's losing credit for me because uh, he shouldn't be letting her do much of anything. He should be like, shut the fuck up. Follow me. Yeah. Like, uh, I know how this world works. You don't. I know what we're supposed to do. You don't. I thought he, they almost like memed him where he was like, I could take out half the stormtroopers here. Nobody would even fucking know. But I was just like, why? Like, I, I feel like he should be more pragmatic, not like show offy. Like, he, he should be more like, uh, and, and I don't think they exhaust their options very well either. They're like, oh, th- we need to find a ship. And they go to this port and they're like, nah, there's no way we can get any ship without alerting basically everybody. I was like, you don't know that. You've looked for like five seconds. You have no idea. Like, <laughs> and then they're like, we need 30,000 credits to, to fucking bribe this kiosk person. And I was just like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we just decided that's what we're doing, I guess. We couldn't, we haven't tried anything else. Then it's like, hey, gambling. It's like, what the fuck? Slow down. Like, why have we decided this is what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah. I like how they're moving fast, though, because usually they'd move so freaking slow. 
so it's enjoyable yeah. like okay damn we're already they already met each other okay so they're probably going to team up now and then they're going to team up with rex and then some shit's going to go down and then they're going to find tech and yeah. I, i'm really surprised that four episodes in they're already reunited I, I did think like because it took the first three episodes for them to escape we were going to have a little bit more time before that happened but now that now they're all reunited now um the <laughs> crosshair I do feel like Crosshair would probably be a little bit more, hey, like, I, you're, you're fucking young. You don't really know what's going on. Like, why don't we do and be a little more forceful with that instead of just going along with the flow? I think what Mahler brought up about uh, if she had, you know, released some people and it had gone badly, I feel like we do need to see a little bit from Omega where she's like, I thought it was, I thought I was doing the right thing by being so empathetic or whatever and like feeling for these people. And she kind of gets like downtrodden because she realizes the world isn't that fucking simple. And then Crosshair can get a little softer and be like, listen, yeah. Omega, like, I, I, I get it. You were trying to do the right thing. Those things happen sometimes or whatever. And him, tr like, make him softer in that way, understand a little bit and trying to like bump her up after she has a failure instead of kind of what they've been doing. Well, but maybe know, like, that will the... come in this series. I, I think we'll probably see that at some point in the series. There's so many character opportunities I feel like aren't being taken advantage of. Imagine like she, you know, gets instead of a kid who knows that where the dog's gone, it's like it's a man, so that we're a little bit more comfortable with beating him up. And then and the guy is like, yeah, fucking five thousand credits, and then it's like she says three, and then he says four, yeah, and then Crosser just pushes her out of the way and punches him, and then kicks him, punch to punch, and says, "Give me all the fucking information." You know, that's not yeah. so sweet, but and then she, yeah. you could just have that shot of her realizing like. This is wrong. Shouldn't do it this way. Shouldn't do. It. And then the guy says it, and then Cross is like, "We got the information. Let's go." And then she can be like, "This, you shouldn't do that to people." Blah, blah. You get that back and forth while the episode is unro unraveling, yes. more conflict, more understanding oh, of their yeah. approaches. And you could have done it so that he was doing his ruthless approach the whole time. She kept recommending like different ways of getting around things that doesn't involve hurting people. And then by the end, there is something she suggested that had they done would have made everything easier. You know that sort of reveal, and he's like, "Huh, maybe I should take you a bit more seriously." Yeah. As opposed to, I'll go gamble while Crosshead just watches the whole time. <laughs> Literally, was, yeah. I don't the fuck yeah. they're thinking with that. And then the stupid captain guy just is like, oh, I happen to be <laughs> visiting the one bar that you happen to be in, and I happen to want to gamble with you at the same time. And then they happen to tell him about the crash ship just before she's about to leave. I was like, oh, this is so lame. Just like generic, evil, <laughs> corrupt <laughs> uh, yeah, he was boring, empire was officer. Yeah, yeah. No, he was horrible. Yeah, he, was, he was a bastard. Yeah, but I mean that's typical for uh, Bad Batch and animated stuff. Everything just kind of it's you know it's a cartoon. It's uh, I, I think, but I think what Mala described isn't like super. Uh, I feel like I, yeah, I feel like that's not hard to do, and it's not like complex or anything. But it's something that gives you a little more than yeah. the do 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 yeah. type of storytelling. It's very segmented, very like quick right now, which is great. Right, right, right now it's and then type of storytelling. Yeah, yeah. It's this happens and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens and there's not much, uh, much else to it. No, you're right. There's a lot of cartoons out there that people adore. You know, like well, for the storytelling in them. What's what's this? Oh, <laughs> White Samari. <laughs> How am I going to explain to them the White Samari law? That that requires like a whole video that you'd have to see. It's a it's it's too complicated okay just appreciate that samari is not spelt wrong fair enough uh will Longman be playing battlefront collection yes oh so we got us all squad up ryan are you gonna play i'll play yeah i have i already have it on steam i don't know if i can uh i get a discount or something on the next one if i buy it no, again i have it on steam too i had to buy the whole new thing I bought it on a PC and PS5 because it's not crossplay. Well, mm. it's not crossplay. It's not crossplay, crosshair. <laughs> I was watching Clone Wars season seven. You can tell George was already setting up Maul as the big head, as the big bad in his sequels. Used the EU too. Disney doesn't even follow canon. No, of course they don't. If but Clone Wars season already, seven yeah, wasn't yeah. George. <laughs> yeah, that was Dave Filoni. Yeah. Um, there was. Now, there was some stuff that usually like the Bad Batch episodes, like those were developed, you know, before Disney took over. And even some of the middle Ahsoka episodes were, but those were 
massively change with the Martez sisters. Um, Ahsoka had a male love interest that was supposed to like play the role of the Martez sisters in, in a little bit of it. But they they linked that up with the lore from Solo and and things like that. Like the uh, Clone Wars yeah. season seven is a hundred percent in line with Disney canon shit. Dude, I hated the Martez sisters. Did piss me off so much. Did George actually want Maul to be a bad guy in the sequels? Why did he throw yeah. his like half his body down the? Because he changed his mind a whole bunch of times. Oh. He's talked about that a few times. I, I think George has had a lot of plans for the sequels. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was gonna sell uh sell it to Disney after he did seven to kind of I wouldn't say fuck them over, but to kind of like make sure that they won't change his his stories and they have to go along with it because he started it. But mm -hmm. then he sold it right before seven. At one Sadly. point, at one point, he saw uh, a statue of Darth Talon or something, and like put put her put her next to Darth Maul and be like, "Hey, they're friends." And they're like, well, you know, Maul's like lived a long time before her, and he's like, "Oh, it could be a clone or something." <laughs> like, like typical George <laughs> shit. He just doesn't care. It's like yeah. when Samuel Jackson's like, "Jedi fall from high heights. He's he's alive." He's like, yeah, he can be alive. I'm fine with that. It's like, Fucking everybody's yeah. alive. All right, George. <laughs> Well, between Everyone. worlds, maybe. And then uh, he's just great at kind of like calming things down when people are like, how do you say it? Is it at, at, or at, at? And he's like, well, there's lots of different dialects in the galaxy, so you can say it however you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine, man. Yeah. Honestly, with the great start of the year that was Justice League, I've been absolutely addicted to Helldivers 2. It tickles the... T Dude, I can't stop playing Helldivers 2. We're gonna, I'm playing that after this. I have a... Uh, I'm going to be raiding my own stream. What level are you? 27, 28? I'm like 16, I think. But yeah, it's good shit. It's amazing. Such a good yeah. game. Have you played it, Ryan? No, I have not. I've heard it's awesome. Dude. Mm -hmm. Smash the bugs. Save the human race. It's great. <laughs> and the automatons. Yeah. I can't wait to see what they do with DLCs. J Mac with a 50 bomb. 50 Damn, different two of them. memberships. 50? Two Damn, of them. Damn, dude. Thank you. J-Mac is everywhere. Watches all the streams. Damn, Daniel. <laughs> Crazy. So, chat, when the... Uh, so, some of you haven't heard this, but when the full site for Theory Savers launches at the end of the month, um, members will be getting big discount codes. So, random members. And every month, we, not just one, but like many. So And also in live streams and stuff like that, too. So, uh... Member up, man. Whether you're a 99 cent member or a well, the higher member you are, the more chance you'll get a discount code. But you're in there. My childhood became a lie the day that Luke Skywalker died from being tired. Finish the lyrics. Love you so much. Big fan of Mahler. Hey, Ryan. Hey. Yeah, that's that song. I don't know the song. You probably I like like... I have enough. I have <laughs> enough damage from that movie. I don't need yeah. a song about it. I'm watching the Clone Wars for the first time. I'm in season three. It's a mid show at best. Okay, we'll just well. wait till season three, bro. <laughs> That's where it starts to really pick He's up. He's in season three. You got theory. You got to dread my review of season one and two. You're gonna be like, ugh, here we go. Well, season one and two. I mean, yeah, like it's kind of slow, and you know, some people really love season one, but season three and four and five. Oof. That's some real Star Wars lore right there. It's great. Mm -hmm. Ryan, I, I I'm really I'm really excited for Mahler's reviews. That's all I'll say. I, well, I told him like I told him that this episode of Bad Batch is like get used to that kind of type of formula. Yeah. For literally all at TCW. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. I've been we'll looking forward happens. for Mahler to review TCW for a very long time. I think you'll love it. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> uh, smash or pass Dune Worm? Uh, depends how drunk or desperate I am, but probably smash. I didn't realize um, there was a pass option on that. But fair yeah, def definitely smash. Don't kill Crosshair. I hope Crosshair kills Omega. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, I, I feel like Crosshair is the most likely to die. Yeah, because the only like they've almost only completed character. Off, right he'll be he's a he's been a big old meanie and he's gonna be nicer and nicer and nicer and he's gonna do some big sacrifice and then they'll be it 
and it's going to be like Omega's going to be like Crosshair, don't do no. this, and and uh, and Crosshair's going to be like Omega, you taught me how to love. Oh. This is what I need to do. Just so okay. correct. <laughs> go, go with go with Hunter. I'll handle this. Live for all of us. Like, that's that's dies. really what Crosshair is like. Final Omega, you nah, bro. It's probably going to be. It's Wrecker's probably going to die. And then they're going to turn Crosshair into Snoke. I wouldn't have thought they'd kill Wrecker because he's the goofball Chungus character. They don't usually like killing those ones. He's like a dog. Like yeah. He's like the retarded dog. You're not going to kill the dog. It's like the They're basic dog with Crosshair. That's why I figured they'd kill him. They're going to kill him. All right. I mean, perfectly fine with all of them dying. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, just, just not even so just gross. in my, like, typical, I think everybody should die. But in general, like, how many fucking clones are we going to have continue to survive and continue to survive and stuff, you know? It's like, going to blaze of glory. Ooh, what if, what if Crosshair gets shot, right, and dragged into a tube and turns into Snoke? That'd be awesome. That's what I said, yeah. Crosshair, yeah. I could even see Snokish features on Crosshair right now. It's like that lady from Attack of the Clones in the library. I need a character idea for my fantasy world. Uh, call it Jujuba. Ooh. Good one. He's made of jujubes. <laughs> uh, I took in an outdoor cat and named it Bane after Darth Bane. He's black, a fitting Sith color. I wanted to name him N-Word, but wife said no. Oh. <laughs> N-Ward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was... I thought he was... Like Edward. All right, cool. Yeah. <sighs> n <-wad. laughs> Yeah, literally, I'm like, is it n word a word? <laughs> In Spanish, it'd be n -wardo. Yes. Once again, you've proved you feel excuse me. Yeah, everyone liked the stream. Yeah, it literally, it was like a Spanish word. Uh, what's up, Christopher? What's up, Christopher, again? What's up, Jablotin? Please look up the Chile commercials. They're online. Why don't you just tell us? Star Wars Chile commercials. <laughs> Vex. Mahler, have you watched Shogun yet? I actually have. I saw the first two episodes. I watched it with Fringy. They're very, very, very high quality. Good stuff. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the they're going to, I guess, portray how the story would unfold. Um, I don't have a huge amount to say about it other than it's just incredibly well made it's good stuff i love the actors i love the authenticity that comes across in it looks like it's gonna be interesting what's it on hulu yeah uh, hulu. yeah yeah it's, it's airing on fx but yeah for streaming it's on hulu i watched the first episode i i really enjoy the show so far uh you got to read the entire thing it's almost all in japanese like i don't have a problem doing that but it is just one of those shows where you have to sit down all right hour and 10 minutes i'm watching the tv oh, nonstop. Awesome. As opposed to, uh, as opposed I to being able to like do anything else during it. So I can't awesome. read, so I had to use the force to sort of figure out what people were feeling and saying. So it's weird, <laughs> but I recommend it. Uh, do we get Hulu in Canada? Well, we probably. That'd be a question for Canadians. I don't see it on my TVs or Apple, whatever. Any news on Kenobi season two? No, not that I know of. Um. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, they shouldn't do it. Paul and Anakin comparisons. Who? What do you? What's I mean, that? Paul Atreides from Dune. Um. Oh, okay. I mean, y you know, they're both young, powerful prodigies that get set down like dark paths. Um. There's certainly like comparisons that are there. They're not like the same person. Right. Um. Paul Atreides can see the future, and he understands that if if he takes certain steps that he's going to cause like galactic level genocide and he makes a decision to, like take those steps without trying to go too far things like yeah. that but he's mm -hmm. like very well aware of some of the damage that it's going to cause and he's trying to do the best he can he's like somebody who can foresee himself becoming space hitler and it's like trying not to is paul the main guy yeah yeah the, the Timothy Chalamet, mm -hmm. Chalamet, yeah, Chalamet, whatever. And I've seen a, I've seen a lot of, I've seen some people recently kind of criticize Timothy Chalamet because like I can't believe that this little scrawny dude would do all this stuff. It's like you can like not like that, but it, you 
very much matches Paul Atreides' description in the book. In Dune, he's supposed to be 15 years old. He's scrawny. He's small. He's even described as small for his age. And it's noted that Atreides mature, Atreides boys mature at a little bit like slower rate than anybody else. And he's 17 by the end of the book. So that would be by the end of Dune Part Two. But I think I think uh, that Timothy Chalamet actually is like very accurate to what Paul Atreides would look like. Mm. Oh, congrats, Ryan. Yes, it is. Two years, baby, since my Batman review that took the internet by storm. Should uh, bake him a cake. Batman cake. The bat cake. Star Grift merch when? Oh. Uh, yeah, boys, we should talk about it sometime. Spam one if you guys would buy some Star Grift merch. Spam two if you would buy two things from the Star Grift site. Yeah. Spam three. If you don't want any of it and you fucking hate the idea. Yes. There it is. So my team at Spring is actually working on, uh, and I announced this a couple weeks ago, on plushies. So they're going to be three plushies and going to have our heads. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to be connected in a row, be like holding hands or something stupid. Aww. Yeah. Like us sitting on a couch looking like we're ready for a casting. Well, I mean, you'd just be representative of us all getting ready to watch Bad Batch together. Yeah. Yes, that would be true. Is mine going to be frowning? <laughs> and or and or. I think yours is going to be like like angry. Angry. Mahler's just going to be Mahler. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll have to do something. You're going to cool. have a happy look on your face. Am I always happy, though? Hmm. I don't think so, no. Or maybe, no, yeah, maybe I'll be crying. You Aww. could be crying, yeah. There you go. Because that would be when Mahler's reviewing TCW. Hmm. Yeah. What's up, J-Mac? Thank you again, man. What's up, Justin? Damn, J-Mac with 20. Praise be to Space King. Who's Space King? Me. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I served with you a vendor. My brother. <laughs> gladiator. The Helldiver thing? No, Gladiator. Oh. Maximus, I served with you at Vindaboda. Well, you men. Maul's return was to be a poor replication of Vader, grievous but with powerful acolytes. New order filling Palpatine's power vacuum lay on top, yo. I'd be fine with lay on top. Uh, I would have. I don't know how that would have gone over, man. Like episode seven, it's revealed Maul is back. I just. I feel like the people who are following the movies from one, two, three, four, five, six would be like, "What the fuck." They would have had the exact same reaction as the dozens of people who saw Solo in theaters. Okay, so <laughs> essentially, wait, wait, you guys know about the sequels, right? That George wanted to do? Yeah, well, I know about the the Wills and a bunch of other stuff. No, so he, he wanted to do in 2019. But a lot of different versions of what George has talked about for his sequels. Yeah, but in 2019, he did an interview with Paul Duncan, who I got to talk to, and he said that his version of the sequels would have been Darth Maul coming back, Luke Skywalker putting together a new Jedi Order, and Talon being the new apprentice to Darth Maul. And there's a big power vacuum in the entire galaxy because of Palpatine's death. So on different worlds, there are stormtroopers that are trying to kind of act like the head honcho and take over, and there's just everyone's fighting each other, all different syndicates. And it's just like a crime-ridden sort of galaxy with no one really knows what the fuck's going on. Mm -hmm. Um... So Maul comes in, fills in the void, and trains Talon. She's extremely powerful. Leia becomes kind of the chosen one and uh, is leading the rebellion. She's still a politician. She doesn't want to be a Jedi. And she's leading the rebellion, or the New 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 Republic, whatever. And... Uh, this is and Darth Luke, Talon. Yeah. Yeah. Cool as shit. She and fucks. Luke, Luke has to fight Maul, and I guess Talon probably fights Luke's apprentice or something. Yeah, we, we've heard a lot of different things from kind of George over the year of like, years of like what he really wanted to tackle in the sequels, really getting into the wills, really getting into like that type of force stuff. I think a lot of it is all kind of combined. I think he probably would have got into that along with some of the stuff he's t he's talking about. Um, yeah. On the outset, me hearing that, don't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I when I heard him talking about that, 
but it's gone through multiple evolutions. If you remember in uh, 2000, in 2015, uh, right before the premiere of Force Awakens, he sat down with Stephen Colbert and talked about, um, you know, he said, well, you know, this isn't really my movie. This is my plan. And you know, everyone's always known I've wanted to do a story about the, the parents, the children, and the grandchildren. And he makes yeah. an aside. He's like, you know, those are all in the novels and comic books and everything. And then, you know, when he's talking about his sequels, he's talking about the Wills. He's talking about the Darth Talon, Darth Maul stuff. I would love to see it. Yeah, it'd be cool, man. Be so, really unfortunately, nice. that ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, guys, I wanted to talk to you about, well, fuck it, I'll do it right now. So I'm I'm teaming up. Do you remember a little while ago I announced I'm doing like a Luke deep fake thing? I remember. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um so that is we're now changing that to um deep fake photos. And we're gonna be telling a story. So what I wanna do is I wanna redo the whole sequel trilogy, but in fan fiction style, and every every single image is gonna look like a legit screenshot from a film, but it's gonna be, you know, like deep faked and all that stuff. So would you want to come in on me with this and do the script for the sequels? We could we could literally create a whole new thing starting after episode six and uh, create something really cool. Yeah, I'm more than willing to like look it's it over look, and give my feedback and stuff. It's going to yeah. look real. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll show you some of the images of uh, the photos. So basically you're talking about doing... Uh, you know, like every like 10 seconds or like describing a scene and like seeing it laid out while you do a voiceover of what would be happening in 30 seconds right. later, change to a different image, shit like Correct. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, not even 30 seconds. It would be, you know, like every yeah, 10 seconds or, or whatever. Basically how I would do fan fictions and some, some things would be animated and all that. Um, so like, for example, here's one photo that we've done. Um, here's another. That's Luke Skywalker. Yeah. I know that one. So, essentially they're taking stuff from, you know, 3D images and then... Oh, he's taking them. a little surprised there. Yeah. So, uh, it's going to look really good when it's done, but, uh, like, for example, here's the Battlefront one, right? And you take that. And then you make it like legit. Um, again, Battlefront, and then okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I think it look cool, man. And uh, you know, there's gonna be some stuff that's gonna be moving. Let me try to find it. Let's see. Here's one image. These are all, yeah. No, you can really do anything. Sky's the limit. Oh, I I was gonna say I couldn't quite tell what it was, and then it came into focus. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just like a, a unfinished version. That looks like yeah, zombie. Dude. Yeah, that yeah. looks like zombie Luke Skywalker yeah. coming to life after the yeah. Night Sisters have uh, put their green magic in him. <sighs> what to get you started, Mauler? The fucking Night Sisters, or that, like that, as a concept in and of itself, is already too much for me. <laughs> Why? Why do you think? What the fuck are the Night Sisters? What is this? You like, gotta watch TCW, man. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah, okay. I'm sure I'll love him after that. I like Dathomir before TCW. Like Courtship of Princess Leia Dathomir. That's my that's my pace right there. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Dude, look, look at, at the that. picture. <laughs> the middle one is me, the right one is is freaking Snoke Ryan, and then you're tech. <laughs> Wait, why is Ryan Snoke? Why are you tech? I thought yeah, I thought we said that I was tech. Yeah, he could be tech. He's autistic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And then I'm 
Snoke, I guess, because I look old in that picture. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I do look really old in that arm. I'm just raging. All right, cool. Well, what he he said, Omega. Oh, what he say? <laughs> I don't even know what he said. Oh, he said, he, oh yeah, them reuniting was nice. It was with Ricka and Hunter. It was pretty okay. touching. Ricka. Still upset at the wasted potential of Ravis in Jedi Survivor. They didn't try for big fights, big for big fight sets, and getting to him on the moon. Had a literal mining laser that we should have used on him. Yeah, don't even get me started on Survivor, bro. They, they, like the game was cool, but the story was just weird all over the place. I didn't get too far into it. Um, I got all the way through Jedi Fallen Order. I, I couldn't like keep playing through Survivor. I just, I was out of it after the first couple hours. Uh, 2,500 people in the stream. Make sure you hit that like button while you're here. We appreciate it. You guys have the same vibes as Clarkson, Hammond, and May from the Grand Tour Top Gear laughing at each other and disagreeing, but BFFs love it. Mm, not with those three. I, it would probably be, I'd probably be May. Theory would be Hammond and uh, Ryan would be Clarkson, I think. I've never seen Grand Tour or like I've seen little clips of it here and there, but I've never like sat down and watched that. That makes you a that. bad person. You need I, to. I've you heard it's not the only it. thing. Yuri, can you watch my animation? It's called Attack on the Dojo. We worked so hard on it. Sure, man. They are re releasing Shrek 2 in theaters for its 20th anniversary this year. Shrek 5 comes out next year. Will you watch it? Yes. Of course. Fuck yeah. It's Shrek, man. Yeah, it's the best. Shrek is Thank old. you, Albert. You know, Shrek is for kids. <laughs> How many people gifted memberships? It's amazing. Watch Nerdonymous Apocrypha videos, and I'm so sad that he doesn't have more vids. Thank you for the wreck, Mahler. Hopefully in one day he'll return. Fucking, he's the chosen enough, one. Enough emails from Mahler, and he may return. Enough Somehow. emails from everyone. Spam him. Tell him he's needed. Unparalleled research, all right? That's what I like to see in my YouTubers. Overall thoughts on Dune. Seeing Chamolet... In Dune and the King makes me wish we got the real Jason Solo with him playing the role. Man, I never even thought about uh, Timothy Chalamet as Jason Solo, but uh, um, I feel like Jason's probably a little bigger than him, but mm -hmm. I really liked him in Dune. I really liked him. That was really funny to you. Yeah. Timothy. Timothy. So Dune is the Star Wars of this generation. I don't yeah, let's, hope, so. let's hope we can change that. I don't think that Dune is as accessible as Star Wars is. Mm -hmm. is Dude, that... no offense to Dune fans, right? But like Dune, the first one didn't have much impact at all in terms of cultural influence, mm -hmm. like the movie. People have talked about it and people very much appreciate it, me included, but it's too distant from mainstream. I think it was I was on a stream uh and Robert My Burnett said, you, you just summed it up as easily as, um, you know, do you think a guy like me has a chance with her? No. He said, like, that doesn't exist in Dune. That kind of chemistry of, of uh, character. And, yeah. and, like, it just makes it hard for the vast amount of people to have it stick in their minds. It's, it's, it's less character driven overall as a story. You know what I mean? Which I think is what makes it a little tougher for people to latch on to um i don't think the books are ex like super accessible i don't think they're easy reads um and i don't think in terms of general mainstream that it has a ton of appeal like with these movies i i fucking love them but i think the cap for this thing is probably going to be in the 800 million dollar which is a, which is you know a lot of money good yeah but um i just don't think it's i don't think it's going to have the same latch as star wars at all no it's not as personable at all it, it it it's with star wars i feel like i'm with the characters with dune i feel like i'm watching the characters through a, literally through a screen or like a glass window hmm. i don't feel the you feel closer in star wars so much closer in star wars yeah bad batch will end with vader five of first killing them that'd be kind of interesting i'd watch it is Filoni allergic to nuance? <laughs> hey. 
we like Filoni here, okay? Do we? Well, that's a royal we, <laughs> Welshman. That's, that's a royal we right there. I don't think you guys did. I'm not a fan. Yeah. But I, I've, I've like not liked him for a long time. I think Mauler's only not liked him for a couple years. That, as soon as I found out about him, I did not like his work. So that's, that's what my journey has been. I think Mauler will like some of the clone arcs in the Clone Wars, but not much else. What I do you think he's going to like a few arcs. Is he going to like the Umbara arc? I think so. But I wonder what he's going to think about the Mortis arc. The, from the little I know of it, I sound... It's, oh. <laughs> I still don't even know how I feel about it. And it's been over a, a decade and a half. So. Almost. Kind of backwards that Ryan is the one who can read while Mahler can't. All right. You think I'm fucking retarded or something? The I told you, I read with the Force. It's way easier. Ryan will do it eventually, too. Hmm. Gay test. Yeah, nice. you do it. God, the gay test, that's a meme from I uh <laughs> it's a meme from Geeks and Gamers Daily from today because in a video I, I was recording on it on stream basically and I put it out last night. On one page, there's like an ad that's <laughs> I just gotta show you guys. I'll pull it up while you talk. <laughs> oh god. I wanna take the Baller. gay test. <laughs> Tony Gilroy gets to write for Vader if Filoni gets to write for Luth and Rail. To take the trade. <laughs> okay. The be the more straightforward question is: Would I sacrifice Andor season two for a like really solid, I assume Veda movie? I guess the question, the answer to that is kind of probably, probably yes, because the scope of like a really excellent Veda film could be huge, and it could actually like reinvigorate Star Wars um, in a good way. Um, but it would be sad to watch Filoni try and write for Luthan Rail because he's basically the good good version of Thrawn, right? Like he's supposed to be a big, commanding, ruthless sort of chess player with to the point where he'll sacrifice people easily um, for the sake of like the overall fight. I look forward to seeing what they're going to do with him. And from what I've seen from Skarsgård and uh, Gilroy's comments, Andor season two looks like it'll be on point for sort of finishing Luthan Rail's story. So that'd be cool. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I understand the value of having a well-written Vader, so it would be really cool to see. It would be nice. Yeah. I don't think Deborah Chow really knew what she was doing. Not really. Oh, look, listen. You hear about Fleming, Flaming Star becoming a Vandal. You'll read yeah. out the N-word, but not White Samurai. Sem Sem the Maori. Samurai. Wow. Anyways, when will theory be on EFAP? We can probably set something up eventually. But yeah, uh, Flaming Star is Boogie's personal uh, mushroom person, and he is a drug dealer who vandalized his house. Yeah, he, well, he spray painted pedophile on his fucking garage, and then broke his windows and stuff, and says he wants to kill him. It's insane. The story is unfolding like as we speak. I because think. of what Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, but also. He told Boogie that he could sell his cards for like a lot of money, and Boogie gave them to him, but then like wanted them back, I guess, because he didn't want to, the, the sale to happen. And so the guy considers that like stealing at that point because they agreed. I'm not sure of the full story. Is People in chat probably know, but it's well, fucking Boogie. Insane. Is it? Is that that YouTuber? Yeah, yeah Boogie2988. Oh, yeah, him, right. Yeah, he's fat. So this is the this is the video I did the other day, and like. In a couple seconds, I'm going to switch screens and look at the ad that's there for like three fucking seconds. <laughs> am I gay test? Am I gay test? Uh, do you think you are gay? Answer the questions <laughs> to find out. Can we take it? Is there a gay test? Jeez. Maybe. Uh, and then Elseworld, some anime game. And then immediately it switches to something else that's very relatable to me. Coupon codes. <laughs> <laughs> I so. hope, like, in the gay test, it has it's the, it's the, like four choices, you know, for, for questions like favorite Star Wars content, OT prequels, Star Wars. You know, just, it's like, <laughs> which one's the gay one? <laughs> it's like, how deep is it? Do you like dick? Yes or no? Like, I, like 
what possible questions could be on this test? But yeah, so now that's that's the fucking meme because Gary like screenshot that and like shared it out. Um, Hilarious, dude. You know, sometimes those targeted ads, sometimes they're real, sometimes they're uh, I don't I don't believe them. Uh, <laughs> Face King is the new Flash Gits cartoon. Came out like two years ago. Pretty funny. Two days. Flash gets pretty good. Night King, thank you so much for the 10 bucks. He says, you know the thing that made me mad was they cut out Fenring, a.k.a. Tim Blake Nielsen, out of Dune 2, left his wife in, which just makes it strange that he's missing. Also, he's so important at the end. They cut a lot of stuff. They cut the Mentot stuff. They cut a lot of the Harkonnen stuff. They cut a lot of the other intergalactic Ooh. politics with all of the, um, with all the other families. You're um, familiar with the uh, the book, are you, Ryan? Yeah, ish. I, I read it once. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Well, Gary, so what yeah. I've seen, which is pretty interesting, and I, I can't be a part of the conversation because I just I've got zero passion for Dune and the films I thought were very good, but I've got nothing else to say, you know. But I've seen people are quite pissed that it's not being criticized more for how unfaithful it is. I think the most unfaithful thing is really the only thing that bugs me at all is the change in Chani's character, in Zendaya's character. Um, and I don't even really have a problem with it until the very end. And I don't want to spoil it for people here. It's, it's hard to get tickets still, to even IMAX screenings. So I, I don't want to sit there and spoil it, but her character is different. And in to me, throughout most of the movie, because you get a lot of internal dialogue and the thoughts and visions of what's going on um, in the book itself, I feel like she's supposed to be a representation to let you know that the change Paul's going through is not good. Like she sees where it's headed. It's not going to be good for her people or whatever, but it's the very end sequence that I really have an issue with. That to me is the really the only real bad thing about the adaptation. Now I think certainly should be criticized for maybe some of the stuff it let it left out, but I don't really know how you do it a two movie adaptation of a book that's not if each movie being four hours long and get all of that stuff in um like i said they left a lot of stuff out but in terms of changes that's really the only like big change that i had a real big problem with <laughs> someone just said what do you even talk about bad batch episode four we, did. we already did <laughs> we can talk more about it though um what did you think about bringing a dog into a, a bar I mean, it is Star Wars. I didn't. I didn't know if that's like is that normal or not. I don't know for the. <sighs> not really. Though it is funny that I, Hag, I... when he wanted the dog to fuck off, right? Crosshair walks <laughs> the dog outside and then leaves him. Leaves I guess. him outside. I guess. Had had Crosshair stood with him, or Crosshair just moved in the room, like moved him to a different part of the room. Then the rest of the episode didn't even happen. Yeah. It's so weird with like the writing choices sometimes. Yeah. I like how they just well, fucking decided, hey, fuck this bribery shit. We can just, you know, break in here and steal a fucking vehicle. <laughs> like, well, you know how I approach these shows, how I approach, let's say, The Last Jedi is completely different to how I approach uh, any animated show, especially Bad Batch. If I looking at Bad Batch, it's like how you would treat a child. It's like, well, the sky is green. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes, it is. OK, yeah. Versus why? It's you... made by adults. Because it's most like it's more for children. Okay, but I don't treat like Wally that way. Why? <laughs> because it's fucking amazing. You can treat it. It's it's better written Wally than most adult content. Yeah, but that's you know. And then that, when we get to like Pixar. actual, Pixar, they're they're pretty perfect. When we get to like triple X, like actual adult content that's strictly meant for people who want to see like explicit shit, most of that is terribly written. Like the Triple storytelling. And it was, what are we, what are we watching? My here? point is that the more you, you're implying that the less mature that it is, the less we have to care about writing quality when it's not true at all. I wouldn't say the less we have to care. I'd say the less my brain works. And I just what? let things go. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Why are you watching it then? Because mm, it's enjoyable. It's Star Wars. I mean, like it, it's to each their own. Like what you enjoy, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I want to see what happens with the characters, and I just I don't really think too much about it. 
to me, all the best um, franchises, whatever they are, whether it comes from books or whether it's movies or animated stuff, all the ones that are, you know, even if they're meant intended for a younger audience, whether that be, you know, 10 year olds, 13 year olds, 15 year olds, the ones that kind of stand the test of time are able to encapsulate everybody and their adults as well. Yeah. Even if it's not necessarily geared towards, well, you must be 21 years old to understand or enjoy this. It's yeah. because it's a story that everyone can engage with, with those characters, with those themes. For sure. So because it's intended for children doesn't mean that it has to not be a good story. No, I don't, no. I don't mean, let me reword that. Not because it's just for children. I mean, like, you know, Toy Story, I think, is a really great film. It's one of the best, I think. It was one of my favorite films. Uh but it's like a it's like a lower budget Star Wars side project that like really has no it, it doesn't matter if it takes place or doesn't because the main characters are still doing their thing. You you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, yeah, you want to okay, the dog wants to come in the cantina, yeah, whatever, I don't care. It's like sure. I don't know. At this point, I don't think I have the same sort of uh, rating system as I did when George owned it. I really, really don't. So when I look at stuff now, I'm just like, well, you just let stuff so, go. Part of the issue, if you're not willing to highlight where you think that there could be like flaws in the writing, is that it would have to, as a result, go the same way both ways. As in, anything good that Bad Batch does, do you appreciate it? Or do you just go like, well, as a kid's show, it doesn't matter? Mm. Yeah, I'd say. I'd just go, yeah, wow, cool. Well, so like the ending of Bad Batch is probably the best moment, and I haven't even seen seasons one and two. The fact that they show an emotional like reaction to seeing each other being reunited for being apart for how twenty three weeks, something like that. Yeah. I feel like they achieved that. It was relatively good, performance yeah. wise, in terms of the voice actors and the animation. Like, I'm not going to say nah, it doesn't matter because it's for kids. No, the emotional moment is an emotional moment, regardless. Yeah, but, but they I could think... have done it badly. How so? So if they'd had like animations or facial reactions built in that don't match the emotion of the scene and the actors being like, hello, how are you? Yay, it's nice to see you. And that was well, it. Now, I'd be criticizing it. Well, now we're talking about performance. It's not like I'm saying I'm letting everything go. I'm saying the little things that, okay, like a dog coming into a, a bar. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Well, it's so really that, what you mean by that then is just that you don't, you don't care about it. Like as, as in like a, it's a nitpick. Mm, yeah, I'd say the nitpick stuff, unless it like really changes the overall feel of the scene or it really goes against canon in Star Wars, I I'm I'm like, whatever, a dog in a bar? Who cares? But to me, the dog in a bar isn't like the main problem. It's just like that entire scene to me is like nonsensical. Well, the, idea that, the idea that these guys, instead of just jacking a fucking spaceship and getting out of there, instead of stealing a ship and getting that fuck out of there, yeah. they're deciding to raise 30,000 credits to bribe someone to let them on a transport and they're doing it by having Omega a fucking like 13 year old or something gamble uh, I, like in the middle well, of this thing drawing a ton of attention themselves by stacking up credits on credits on credits is yeah. like a wild scene and well, yeah, that's I, the I, thing. I, I, there's a kid gambling in a bar I'm not gonna I'm not gonna think about a dog in a bar well, no, but you, okay, so this is why I wanted to point out that I assume you think it's something that's like almost irrelevant slash a nitpick, and I'd be like, oh, so why it's important, I thought this is why you were bringing it up, Brian, not for everything you just said, but that's on top, is that that dog being in that bar is what makes the entire third act happen. Yes. So, like, it may come across, for example, right, people say, like, who fucking cares if there's a knife disappearing in the middle of the TLJ throne room fight? And it's like, don't care, it's a tiny thing. It's like, well, well logistically, it's a tiny thing, kill the but it, it, if it existed, yeah, she'd be dead, and then the entire story is annihilated if, if Ray dies. That's yeah. the, the consequences are huge. Yeah. So, like, that's the significance of these things. Like, and I don't mind anybody saying, like, that doesn't sound like a big issue. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, we can explain, like, consequently what happens if these things are behaving the way they should. That's why I said I'm not sure if dogs are supposed to be in bars or not in their culture or whatever. But, like, that's not, that's just one of the many different, like, cause and effect issues that happen in that moment, which doesn't have to be written that way. Because we've talked about a couple already, but there's so many examples of not only TV shows, but films that are meant specifically for children that when you're an adult, you watch, and you're like, shit, man, this is really well put together. Yeah, I think the last stream we had, I mentioned Incredibles. I loved that as a child, yeah. and as a fucking adult, it's it's excellent. Even better. I, I would argue so, yeah. Yeah, well, so like things with Andor or, you know, major plot 
changing moments that like they they fuck up on like you know like what you mentioned in the last jedi with the praetorian guards i think those are much more important to kind of focus on uh than i think <clears throat> you know with andor it's just uh, with um bad batch it's just it's it's a it's not a show that's really going to change the overall timeline does that matter of course it matters yeah for sure why because it's outside of everything yeah, but my point is, like, why would that change whether or not it should be amazing? I mean, it should all be amazing, but I mean, have you not kind of seen what's been going on with Star Wars and then accepted the fact that <laughs> it's slim? Well, there's a difference between ex what I expect and what I would push for. I think it ought to be good. I think all of this ought to be better. And so that's why I think sure. these conversations should focus around is how could they have done better? A lot of people expect that I won't like these Bad Batch episodes, but I'm saying you're like, yeah, of course I won't, because it's going to be written by people who don't give a fuck. Like, if this is this is the kind of stuff that we get, where the storytelling is pieced together with basically nothing. Meanwhile, there's TV shows that I'm watching right now that are doing way better than this. We were just talking about, like, Shogun mm -hmm. or whatever, right? There's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, those are the different ones that are going to have a very specific interest in making everything follow along from everything else. Bad Batch might nail a couple of emotional moments. I think the speculation on the sacrifice of one of these members of the Bad Batch will probably do that fine because yeah. it's not, it's pretty hard to fuck that up. But the thing is, um, uh, John CJG from good old Arby and the Chief once said this. I can't remember which video it was, but that if you think of um, narrative payoffs as a big truck that's going to slam into like a wall, every episode beforehand is loading dynamite in. And yeah. every time you miss the opportunity to throw another stick in, is the explosion is just going to be less by the time we get to the point. Um, some of the yeah. like Boromir's sacrifice in Lord of the Rings, I, I referenced that that's probably one of the best ones I've seen in all of storytelling. And it's because of all the buildup, I think they fucking nail it. And then they nail the scene itself. And I just think the Bad Batch, like, yeah, I'm probably not going to like it. I may very well not like Comb Wars, but I'm still happy to have the conversation about storytelling of how much better this could be. And I don't think that we should say like it's for kids or that it doesn't have a significant impact on the overall timeline or that it's small or that it, it's filler, you know, anything that would sort of distract us from wanting to push for these artists to do better. Well, I mean, in a perfect world, sure. You know, in a perfect world, there's a lot of things that I would change, but I've kind of just sat back and accepted the fact that some of the projects are because it's there's so many cooks in the kitchen that some of the projects aren't going to be as good as the others. So like Mando one, for example, isn't going to be uh comparable to really anything else because i feel like that was probably one of the best star wars projects made uh tales of the jedi the dooku episodes i don't think there's going to be a single star wars project that's better than those three uh to date that for me that includes Andor, it includes everything else bad batch whatever when i look at bad batch i see something that's just like a sort of extracurricular story that they're just making for um, kind of fun to complete George's sort of ideas of the Clone Wars and what happens inside of that and the characters within it. So when I look at it, I'm not so meticulous and so unbelievably like difficult like I am with the, you know, uh, Skywalker saga. You know what I think the reason for Bad Batch existing is? To explain away the sequel trilogy and lead up to the sequel trilogy and explain Palpatine's cloning I, and shit. I, I that, hope that, not. That's what the purpose of Bad Batch is. I really hope not. I like really hope that they're they're doing something in between. So like the Project Necromancer thing is just Palpatine bringing himself back. And he does. And he's successful. And there's a young version of him. And then somehow it gets killed. And they lose the files to recreate it or, or whatever. It was like a one in a trillion chance. Yeah, because I feel like ever since we, from the very first couple episodes of Bad Batch, we find out how like important Omega is and she's special, like blah blah blah. It's mm. all been setting up for this M count bullshit, like yeah, and, and all leading up to this, which is tied in with Mandoverse, M count, getting Grogu, like, like the cloning stuff. That's yeah. to me, it's all about leading up to the sequels. That's like the that's why they greenlit Bad Batch to begin with. Yeah. Which yeah. is why, I no, mean, I even even though, yeah, you're right. One, you know, episode four of season three of something might not have these uh, massive impacts on the overall, like, story of Star Wars, but no. it is all part of the story of Star Wars. I'm um, not saying it shouldn't be perfect. I, yeah. I wish it was. I wish it was. But 
if I were to sit here and kind of nitpick at literally every single thing that I think is wrong, I could do that. I could I could rip apart every single moment of every episode of everything. And or Tales of the Jedi, Bad Batch, but then I'm not having much fun anymore. And so I'm I'd rather focus on the really big important things that are like lore breaking that are character breaking instead of being like oh well, there's a fucking dog in a bar ah oh, that's just stupid that really destroys the plot it's like yeah it does but okay whatever uh you know i could always say like oh well if this and this didn't happen then you know the whole story would have changed which is the point of my fan fictions which is kind of how i started my channel so it's like yeah absolutely i i've been doing that since i started my channel but to do that with everything i kind of have to pick and choose otherwise it's just not fun anymore so when I do that with something like Empire, I end up finding things that are really well put together ahead of time, like all meticulous decisions that are made in order to push to particular payoffs, but they have to justify yeah. everything. They, the further you roll it back, the further you're like, oh, they did that and that so that it would make this happen and push this to here and this to here. Right. Like, um, I see so much design in the original trilogy that it's impressive at times, right? Like yeah. giving Luke his uh, you know, prosthetic hand yeah. as early as uh, Empire, and having that payoff in Return of the Jedi where he, he looks at it is fucking beautiful. Yeah, And it's it's something that you have to set in line a while back before you can make use of it. Um, or at least they did, is, is part of the point. And I, I'm just a person that derives a lot of fun out of seeing them meticulously craft like excellent storytelling and whatever it may be. I don't have fun when... Say, for example, someone says like, oh, geez, we're, we're stuck here. What are we going to do now? We, we can't get out unless we have a gun. And then a gun falls out of the sky. And they're like, ah, there we go. I'd be like, yes. what the fuck? I if someone says agree. like, well, it's more fun for them to have a gun in this scene. I'd be like, I don't give a shit. I'm not I having fun agree. now. <laughs> I fully agree. But see, the way I kind of look at things is like, let's say you were uh, boxing against uh, uh, someone of your size and age and skill level. And then you take someone who is, let's say a lower, let's say a child. Let's say you're boxing a child. Let's say you're boxing your kid, if you have, or if you ever have one. Would you not expect something different? Would you not tone your level of aggression down against the child? So, would I do that against Toy Story? No, because Toy Story is an amazing film, right? But so if something is, is core if factor something... isn't what it's aimed at. The core factor is how fucking good it is in the first place. It looks like right. But if something is proving to you that it's really not up to par, then you can only expect a certain limit from it. Uh, considering I've already got like moments I like and moments I don't, I already don't know exactly what I'm getting from this show. Like I appreciate the final scene in this. I quite like the way that well, they frame. You like in Bad Batch? Yeah, I already said like the their reunion. I think was pretty good. I haven't even seen two seasons of it that would make that a lot more meaningful to me. But I think they nailed mm -hmm. it. And I like the standoffish sort of nature with them and Crosshair, which. Again, I've not got all the context for why they don't like Crosshair slash they don't like each other or what their history is, but I've I've understood it from the context of the scene and mm -hmm. I think he they presented them. it pretty well. Exactly. Well, my point is that I I recognize what's being done well, and then I see how they run out an episode like this, which a lot of people could say like it doesn't fucking matter, dude. It's like episode four of a season that's really long in a spin-off show of a spin-off thing that nobody cares about. And I'd be like, I never stop caring about how good storytelling can be in all angles and Star Wars is health is is you know it's everywhere right it's throughout all of its projects if if, yeah. if it were good everywhere it would be a juggernaut it's not it, no it's, it's not it's even good some, in any some, way, some really. of it's on life support and some of it's like like average health I'd say that's probably the best case well, you know, well like even the Jedi I think is is probably top tier health but I've argued on other streams that if Andor had come out right after Rogue One like right after it uh it would have been way better received. People Probably. would have given a shit. Probably. Most likely. Yeah. But yeah, if it comes out around about now, if a, if a great thing for Star Wars comes out now, it's like, yeah, it's in trouble because it has to earn back a hell of a lot of trust, which it well, probably won't do. All of that got destroyed with The Last Jedi. And kind well, of Last saying that the, Jedi, the, Solo, and Rise of Skywalker, there was a big old it, it, dest it destroyed everything. Rogue One coming out was... I would say after that was peak Star Wars time and before the uh, the Last Jedi trailer or, or during the Last Jedi trailer, um, before the launch of Last Jedi, that was probably peak Star Wars excitement. Yeah. You, I, you, could, you, could, peel, you could peel an egg and uh, just write Star Wars on the egg and it would, it would people would watch. 
it was that. I was hype as fuck after that I TLJ so trailer. Hyped. It was so hype, dude. Yeah, I know. I know. And then it just... That's why I wonder, is like, is there any way to bring it back to that? And I need, still like, think there two is. Two to three good movies in a row. Uh, Phenomenal ones. Not one, not like good. We need something that's like insane, like mind-blowing, like, like holy shit. Did George write this? Did George get involved with this? What's the deal? I, I think even if... I think even if they're... If you put out three movies that are seven out of tens, that'll get people back. Yeah. Like, honestly, I, I don't think, I don't so think the bar good. for people to jump back in is really that high because people want to love Star Wars. So. Yeah. No, you got to do a three hitter. So you got to do it once and then people are like, okay, it was good. But like, you know, how many times we had one good thing and then they fuck up the rest. Then two and like, oh shit, this next one was also really good. And then three, everyone's back. Well, not That's everyone, but 90%, I'd say. Isn't that what Ryan said? Three goods? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with that. I, I think that would happen too. But the, you know, we need a full reset to figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to happen, dude. With uh, the Ray movie. No, uh, apparently they need to learn their lesson further. Uh, they haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, they so just I, want to dig themselves deeper into the ground. I can't wait for uh, Ray movie, Mandalorian and Grogu movie, Taika Waititi's movie. Um, what else are we gonna get? Are we getting one from Sean Levy? To Sean Levy doing a Star Wars movie? Fuck it, James Mangold will have Dawn of the Jedi. Man, we're gonna be fucking rolling, dude. Twenty twenty nine comes around, Star Wars is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm positive, man. The Acolytes coming out too. That's gonna be a banger. You kidding me? Comes out in June too. Supposedly, yeah. June fifth. It's gonna go right up against House of the Dragon, which <laughs> I cannot wait for. <laughs> And that, that to me too, that's something that, that's when, meticulous writing right there. House of the Dragons, like the amount of fucking work they have to put in for all these different characters moving all these, but the, like theory yes. as an example, right? They'll yeah. have an event happen to a person when they're age 10, that's going to come up when they're age 53 in some way, shape or form. Like it's the amount of fucking prep work they did for season one. That's obviously meant for going forward in House of the Dragon. I just I'm not expecting that level for uh Bad Batch at all. It's just that I I would like a TV show that's oh, fucking God, no. semi entertaining to me. Good luck with that. Yeah, well no, I, hey, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think I'm just a little bit uh jaded at this point where I'm like, okay, you know what? The only thing keeping me from shitting on my favorite franchise every single day is the fact that I just look at it as if it, if, if it's a little bit uh um so what I'm looking for, uh, not great. I mean, you know, a bit of introspection, re-clarification -clar of why we're doing anything we're doing, why we keep up with it and stuff is totally normal. I, uh, I imagine me and Reiner asked that more than you are, uh, more than, more than, more than most people are. Like, why are you even talking about Star Wars if you hate, like, everything that's coming out? It's like, hate everything that's coming out from the MCU. Why do you keep talking about well, it? Like, well, I'm giving my opinion. You know what I mean? It's not even just that, right? Half the time, I'm like, why the it. fuck do you think? think yeah. for five seconds why do you think we're talking about it it's because i care about it as much I as i despise a lot of star wars stuff that's come out virtually all of it in the past decade plus um that doesn't mean i still don't love star wars or care about star wars but even if i do have the expectation of like i'm going to bad batch assuming i'm not gonna like it i watched the first two seasons one the big fan of it probably not gonna like season three um but with that being said i'm still gonna give him my honest opinion House of the Dragon is a perfect example of something that I think both myself and Mahler probably went into expecting we were going to fucking hate because yep. Game of Thrones seasons kind of half of six, all of seven, and especially all, especially all of eight left a really bad taste in my mouth and I think Mahler's mouth and a lot of people's mouths. Yeah. I went in expecting to hate it. Some of the comments I'd seen from the actors, wasn't a fan of the race swapping. Like I was in like the perfect mode to shit all over House of the Dragon. First episode comes out and I'm like, you know what? I uh, I kind of really like that. I, I like su surprisingly really enjoyed that. And then it just kept getting better and better and better. And was it a perfect series? No, uh, especially episode nine had some big problems with some changes they made and things they decided to do. But I cannot wait for season two of House of the Dragon. And that's something I fully expected to hate. Dude, I um, I think it was the third episode where I was like, oh, shit. I like this, and now I'm hyped for like next episodes. And when we got to was it episode seven with the um, the uh, Viserys is sort of climax of his arc. I remember it's thinking to myself like, "Fuck eight. me, we're back. We're actually eight, back." Yeah, eight. Yeah. Of, I think eight. Yeah, 
we, we, we were at a point where I was like, I'm actually anticipating every episode and I'm enjoying talking about it with friends. It's like, oh my God, it's been so long. Like, where have we been? And it's, it's funny because I think to an extent that desire to be in that mode, sometimes you'll like try and push us in a sense, like you, you'll push yourself to that mode uh, regardless. Like if something's, if something's like sort of working, or if it's nearly there, you might be like, well, it's so much fun to be in the mode of like celebrating a piece of fiction with everybody, feeling like a meaning from it. I feel like that's what killed Marvel, by the way, it was everyone loved the experience of sort of celebrating everything that came out, that people were just celebrating it willy-nilly and, and eventually yes. realized, like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, people wanted to be a part of it. This. Yeah. They, yeah. Like, they like celebrated it into the ground. There's nothing yes. left. And now a lot of the tourists, in my opinion, a lot of like the tourist type of fans who like come into something when it's popular and then leave when it's no longer popular, they have kind of left the MCU. Yeah, um, yeah. they're gone. Well, and then the people who want to celebrate have now come to like, have you seen like, there's so many videos we cover on EFAP of content creators who were celebrating a lot of these films like MOM or Quantumania who have now started making videos of like how the MCU died. And it's like, motherfuckers, you fucking enjoyed everything from phase four and five. What's going on? Like, if you want to call out the, the, the the quality in retrospect. I do think that there's a fairness to that because we can get blinders on from enjoying things as community sort of approaches. Yeah. But again, doesn't that circle back to the value of having uh, assholes like me and Ryan? The you know we're here to sort of be like, hey, look at this thing. While someone else are assholes, I, I think I think you guys look at stuff without the rose-colored glasses on, which people need. You know. I appreciate that. I do feel like I can be an asshole sometimes, though. I don't Regardless of my the color of my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys. And I think it's important. I think that's what makes this show so good. Uh, you know the thing that made me mad was they cut Count Fenring, a.k.a. Tim Blake Nielsen, out of Dune 2, but left his wife in, which just makes it strange that he's missing also so important at the end. I read that one. You... Divers fight on the east or western front, and what have you called your ships? Mine's the Spear of Patriotism. Also, Space King is the Flash. I did not understand any of that. You didn't understand it. So we fight, well, I fight typically on the eastern front. That's the uh, the bugs, right? Oh, he's talking about, he, oh, he's talking about, okay. He's, okay. I'll dive. And then my ship is called the Leviathan of Law, which is mm. pretty cool, let's be honest. How often do you play? I mean, you must play pretty often if you're 16. Um, like between editing, I usually have like a mission every, I don't know, hour and a half, something like that. Okay, cool. Well, let's hop on because I play every night for probably two to three hours. Hell yeah. Dune is not the Star Wars of this generation. The OT transcends generations. It will always be for this generation. Um, I mean, yes and no, right? Like, yes, they'll always be amazing and everyone should show their future generations it, but no in the sense of we don't quite have a binding fiction in culture right now that we all think is awesome and inspiring. Nothing brand new anyway. Yeah, yeah and Star, Star Wars was a cultural phenomenon when it came out, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. So I, I, that's more what I, I feel like they're, they're talking about when he, when he mentions that um, Dune is the Star Wars of this generation. The, the type of the, the the legitimate hype phenomenon that it was. It was one of the biggest movies of all time in 1970, 1977 when it came out. What are your thoughts on James Gunn's Superman movie having a budget of $365 million? He's coming to my state of Ohio and getting $11 million tax credit. I wish I got tax credits. Man, if, if he fucks it up, good God, DC will be in trouble. Yeah, I think that you're setting yourself up for failure because... If your projected budget is three sixty five, you're assuming you're going to get some tax credits. Maybe bring that down to three hundred million dollars total spent. You're setting yourself up to have to break nine hundred million dollars at the box office just to break even. I think that is a poor plan. It's just because of how people feel about superheroes, how people feel about DC in general right now. Um, I I don't think that's a recipe for success. I'm no less worried than the next person on James Gunn's Superman film. Uh, this definitely a, we'll have to wait and see, you know. One make it as grifty as possible. White A4 paper with star grift in all black, not to waste money on ink. 
what the merch we just have pictures <laughs> just, <laughs> sell, just sell fucking letter like uh letter stock paper just ship it out to people what's angle. funny is it would take more effort but it would look cheaper if we all like crappily had wrote star grift and crayon <laughs> like, <laughs> i would do that dude that's actually good it would be funny dude that's actually good and we can just say this is merch for children so don't have any standards for it when you get it yeah essentially you're gonna twist that and run with it. Fuck! I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I, I know. Just went like, I know. <laughs> Do you think the third Jedi Order game will still be made? Do you think this will be live action Clone Wars with Hayden and Ariana? Uh, the yeah Jedi Order game. Yeah, I mean, made a shit ton of money. But honestly, the Jedi Order shit is like the only reliable thing they have. Yeah. For the Star Wars fucking IP right now, outside yeah. of Baby Yoda. Uh, shouldn't no, be reliable. I, I would love for them to do a Hayden and Ariana, but I don't think they will. <laughs> Frick, Mary, kill, Watto, Jabba, Salacious, Crumb. Well, I can't. Well, rest in peace to the uh, the voice actor for Slate. <laughs> you were about True? to say, I can't. He just, he just passed away, so I can't do that. Oh, that's what like makes you not want to do that <laughs> that's one? That's what makes yeah, you stop on Salacious, Crumb. That's the, end, that's the end of that one, yeah. Unfortunately, guys, I would I would kill Watto. I would marry Jabba, and I marry would Jabba, fuck yeah. Salacious Crumb. <laughs> I like the certainty. I'm like, what? There's no other fucking option. Come on, there's no other. <laughs> Call some fucking what, little crab Like, listen, <laughs> Watto ends up some fucking just fucking piece of shit out on the streets right everything goes i, I don't want to fucking detach myself to that salacious crumb seems like he'd be fucking down for a quick fuck and then forget about him jabba is fucking rich he's got an entire empire once he dies maybe i could take it over bro okay so we know if ryan was a girl he'd be a gold digger for sure mm-hmm Faux show. These are the Holy options I've been shit. presented with. What am I supposed to like? Is Watto just such a good person I should marry him for his personality <laughs> and his money? <laughs> Rose, already, Rose already going for the money. Be like, Jabba's rich. He's got money. Some fat, fucking, disgusting criminal who's rich. See, I'd be marrying Jabba for his personality. Wow. We, mm. Where have we seen? Where, okay. All right. That's that. Okay. Lucas stole so much. I could see you being like the like. Okay, I'm Lucas stole so much for from Dune. Paul and Alia versus Luke and Leia. Main character has a vision of his wife dying in childbirth, giving birth to twins. Arrakis versus Tatooine. Sandworms versus Sarlacc. It, there, there's a lot that's inspired by. Well, Dune. remember the soundtrack for Star Wars, which has been considered like one of the huge reasons it's as successful as it is. It's all taken from the. Uh, like a lot of it's taken from the planets, right? Um, sort of. It, it, there's a line between like I, I. You can call that you can call that inspired. You don't have to call it stole. I don't think you know like you know like a sand creature. The sarlacc and the the sandworms are, are very different. I get the connection, but they, you know it's like a remix, right? <laughs> Nothing wrong with a remix. Whatever it takes. <laughs> you know, get the money. And I mean, what does it mean if if Dune wasn't able to capture what Star Wars did? Does it mean that Star Wars stole it and showed people where Dune couldn't, or something? Or does it mean it mm -hmm. synthesized it into a format that Dune wasn't as effective in? Like, this got to. I Look, just everyone takes inspiration from everyone. As someone who hates plagiarism, I think we're chill on Star Wars being very much inspired by Dune. That's okay, and it's cool. And I kind of like spotting and influences in great artists, right? That's that's awesome. Nice. Matthew is Ray Skywalker. That's awesome, dude. Congratulations. Strength and honor, indeed. I love the video of Maul coming back during the Legacy era to fight Crate's Sith Remnant. Bunch of tattooed animals killing each other for power. I mean, I like I, I think... like Cade Skywalker taking down Darth Crate's empire. Yeah, I don't think Crate was supposed to be around though in George's 
version. But I mean Legends, yeah. Cool. Is that Darth Talon and Mara Jade bathtub vid I watched on the hub canon or Legends? That exists? Star Wars Infinities. Ryan, what's your favorite standalone Star Wars book? Deceived with Malgus is mine. Standalone, so you mean like not connected to a series? I think I said Star by Star is probably my favorite book. That's a new Jedi Order series. Just like one single standalone. Um, obviously, Plagueis is a standalone novel. It's really fucking good. Um, I don't know. I do like I Jedi. Um, I really like I Jedi. That is a that is technically a standalone book. Um, but would it you, weaves in some stuff you've heard, you've seen in a couple other different uh, series. What would you think of the whole thing in that book where he plugs the lightsaber in, charges it? Like, I think that absolutely is, like, to me, because there's stuff in that the whole time about them having to charge their lightsabers up. So, yeah. like, to me, I have no problem with that at all. Yeah, because Disney I, doesn't really go into detail on it. No, and, and even, I mean... To be fair, even the movies we saw from George doesn't really go into like too much detail. Like it's very much a mystery. And you do have the deleted scene uh in Phantom Menace, right? With Obi-Wan's lightsaber. Which one? Uh you don't know that deleted scene in Phantom Menace with Obi-Wan's lightsaber where it doesn't fucking uh where it doesn't fucking turn no. on? No. Mm. What? I thought I saw all the deleted scenes. Uh, hold on. What's up, Yuri? If I can find it. Hey, Maul or Strength and Honor. Y'all read that one already. I know. I thought you guys were going to talk about Clone Wars with the micro series soon. Also, Ryan, is Outbound Flight a companion piece to Heir to the Empire? Um, Yeah, you... If you just randomly read Outbound Flight without reading the Thrawn trilogy, you're probably going to miss a lot of references in it. What's up, Zed? Ryan, have you heard the Pinchcliffe Grand Prix? It's a Norwegian animation from 1975. It has a race sequence that is shot by shot, similar to the Episode 1 pod race scene. There are some clips on YouTube. Um, I've heard about it before, but I've never watched it. But I've heard those... People say that before, but I've never actually seen like a comparison of it. Have you three become too jaded to enjoy Star Wars? Uh, he said Star Stator Wars. Okay, that's different. Oh, Stator, what's that? <laughs> I think it's just misspelling. I'm kidding. No, you're fucking. Um, Stator Wars. Uh, no, well, I mean, clearly not because all three. Well, I can't say for Ryan. I know that me and Theory like particular parts of Star Wars, even to this like newer stuff. So obviously not. We're not too jaded. Mm. Um, Theory admits Ryan knows way more, a hundred percent, and I'll say that on record every time. Can I mean, Ryan's like a autist with Star Wars? I am. You know what? I messed something up the other day though. Because when I get into that long, detailed explanation about how interdictor cruisers and gravity well generators and stuff, I I didn't even think that the Super Chat was talking about the mass shadow generator specifically from KOTOR 2, uh, which is, is look different than what I was talking about. That was something that could basically recreate a massive gravitational pull that they activated and fucking destroyed a shit ton of ships all at the same time and kind of left a wound in the force on Malachor 5. I got so excited to talk about gravity well generators that I messed up the explanation about mass shadow generator. So I do apologize. I saw it in the comments later. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, how dare I you? I fucked that um, up. Ryan, what was the last, the latest piece of Star Wars that you fully enjoyed? Oh, my gosh. Um, Tales? There, there was a couple. There was a, like I said before, there's a couple things in Tales of the Jedi that I enjoyed. Uh, like the Obi Wan and Dooku, or sorry, the Qui Gon and Dooku stuff. Um, in terms of like an entire piece of Disney Star Wars that I loved, I thought Rogue One was mid. Um, I didn't think it was some glorious fucking amazing yeah, I didn't thing. I loved, just enjoyed. I, I would say that Rogue One, as jaded as I was, that's to me like the best movie that they've done. Not even yeah. close to anything else. Yeah. Um, Andor's okay. I just I I don't I don't like that story. Yeah, it's slow. Um, it's not that it's slow that bugs me. It's I I just maybe it's I don't like Diego Luna. No, right. But there's I no, I do no I don't lightsabers. give a fuck about Cassian Andor as a character. Maybe that's because I always envision him as a fucking 
gender swapped Kyle Katarn Janors from Rogue One, but I don't know. There's it's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a long time since I loved something from Star Wars, and it'd be before Disney took over, hundred percent. Yeah, well, up you. Well, the last thing I probably loved from Star Wars was the Fate of the Jedi series. That's the last thing I was really fucking engaged in and loved, and that just probably ended enjoyed. in 2012. So. Just looking for enjoyed. You enjoyed. You, like, was there an episode of Andor where you finished and you're like, man, that was fun. Um, I, I think like the last episode is also the prison escape episode. I did enjoy the prison escape episode. I'll say yeah. that yeah. Um, from Andor. That was a good one. Um, what about Mando? Anything in the three seasons? Bro, the first, the first season of Mando, if you cut out like the middle like three episodes, I think it's like an okay story. Um, there's a lot that I have questions about in terms of tracking <laughs> fobs, <laughs> things like that. Why are you Why are you doing that? I'm trying to say that I think there's that there's a little bit of Mandalorian season one that's like an okay story. I like the first 30 minutes of Mandalorian. I was like, man, this is the vibe we're going to get. This dark fucking bounty hunter that just takes people out in the bar. Fucking takes know, right. oh, yeah. I was like, that's fucking, that's fucking cool. And then they decided to fast forward through his entire arc and give him a baby. And I thought that was silly. You're not going to hear me compete on that. I was already disappointed with episode two of Mando. Mando, Jesus. Mando. Uh, the, the Jawas stealing his shit and the egg, all of that, like watching him be a retard throughout that whole episode was tough. Yes. And I was like, this is only episode two. No. And then episode three, where all the bounty hunters just kill, no, sorry, all the Mandos kill all the bounty hunters. That shit was insane. Like, in terms of what it meant going forward. And then we find out, what was it? All their armor got taken? They were actually killed. They all ran away and left their armor back. They left, the, they left like, the thing that's their life. Which like, I think there's sense. literally creed and religion around. Like all of armor. them could easily have defeated the the stormtroopers. Like it would have been fucking because like we see that the massive one... squadron of all defeated by fucking Mando and friends. Remember, like the one, uh, I forget his name now, but the big fat, uh, big heavy Mando. He took yeah. out like fifty fucking guys oh all my by himself. God. That shit was so funny <laughs> because he was like, "Go, go! I'll I'll hold them off," and then kills everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine like I'm trying to think of other like epic scenes where it's like I'll I'll delay them, I'll get you some time, and then they awkwardly realize like, oh shit, I won. Okay. Ironically, everything in Mando should have been slower. Like they should have done everything slower. Like they got rid of his fucking ship. Oh like, my god, in the Using middle the of season crest. two. What a like, stupid the, move. Yeah, like I think the Razor Crest was cool, obviously inspired by it makes uh, sense. I think inspired by you know Django Fett's ship and stuff like that. But the Razor's Crest in and of itself, it was like, okay, there's people that are buying like super expensive figures for Razor's Crest, and you fucking just yeet that shit immediately and then give him just so we can give him the fucking Naboo Starfighter, which makes zero sense for him to have. It was dumb. Um, but at least no, we got a bunch of Pelly, at least we got a bunch of Pelly Mata scenes. Yeah, Ryan's Fuck. favorite. Do you remember that line from her that really summarized how shit the character Ryan Fernando was, where she said, first you don't like droids, now you like them. I was like, yeah, that's it. That is <laughs> that is his character arc. How you doing, yeah. Theory? <laughs> I mean, I can't disagree, so it's there's nothing... If I have something to say, I'll say it, but yeah, there's, yeah I can't disagree with that. If we had this podcast while the episodes of Mando season one were coming out, it would have been would have been would have been crazy. Would have been dude. spicy. Oh, dude! I mean, just wait till uh, supposedly we're supposed to get season four, and then we're gonna get a movie. Hopefully, Jack. Is Black that and the Luke new rumor? That's what someone from the inside that I know is telling me. But eh, who knows, man? I don't know. The thing I question about that is, it seemed like they were ramping up to start production of Mando season four, like right at the turn of the year. They're gonna have six seasons. But John Favreau it, said six seasons, and it seemed like to me it seemed like they're because you even saw stuff from like stunt crew and people talking about ramping up for Mando season four filming and all this stuff. But then the announcement of the movie, I feel like, has completely delayed a lot of that. So I don't know it's, if they know weird. what they're gonna do. I don't know if they. I don't know if they're actually going to do a season four. If they're going to warp the plans for season four, which had already been written into the Mando movie, because if that's gonna start filming. In summer, that's what we've heard, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. 
that's a yeah, yeah I know. quick turnaround. It is for sure, and they they can do it. If they want, but theory maybe you could make an AI of Luke and Mara fighting together. Yeah. Hey, Star Wars Theory, I ordered a saber from your company, Theory Sabers. Can't wait. Got the Anakin Profi board. You need any three Profi board with Neopixel. Little oh, dude, you're going to love it. That's the best one. Keep doing mm. your thing. Right on, man. Mahler, which one did you get? Did you get the Profi the... or the Xeno, or the um, SNV4? Oh, I'd have to check. I'm not sure. Okay. okay. How many sound fonts did you get with it? Uh, Like, uh, I, I don't like, like an exact 20 number. Plus. Like, no, like... Are, I think so. Like... I think so. There's a shit ton on there, yeah. Oh, then you got the nicest one. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it was the most expensive. I was hoping to... Then uh... you got, yeah, then then you got the profit, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a cool saber. I love it, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna go hit my neighbors. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, thank you, Vax. I hope you love it, man. And uh, we just dropped Luke a couple days ago over the weekend. So uh, that is now also available. Hey, Theory, how about Boba and Cad Bane track down Omega and Boba shoots Bane to protect Omega after finding out she's his sister? Maybe we will have that famous duel. We already had it in Book of Boba Fett. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, he got his dent on his helmet from Cad, and we're supposed to see that. Okay. Did you also see Boba has a, a dent in his... Uh, Jock strap. <laughs> Someone uh, <laughs> took a shot. What's you know? the story about that? Yeah, yeah. Someone <laughs> yeah, took a shot. Cad, his, well, Cad yeah. Bane, tell us what the story is. <laughs> 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 we totally, we definitely need a series, an eight episode series arc about the Denton Boba Fett's jock. Like, yes. we, we need to see that. <laughs> it's like George was designing the character, or whatever, and he's like, "Yeah, how about someone shot him in the dick?" It's like, "Oh yeah." That's it's joke. so crazy because you know it. You know it's just hey, let's make his fucking armor look like worn and weathered, like he's been around on that ship. And we're like, yeah. how did he get that dent? Like, how did he get the dent in his dick? <laughs> how did he get the dent in his dick? Yeah. Dick dent. Dick dent. <laughs> Salacious crumb attacked him. <laughs> <laughs> hey theory, how about Boba and Cad Bane? We are. I read this one. I'm stupid. Uh, why does he want Maul back? Because he looks cool. I think Maul's a pretty compelling character. I've seen so much of goddamn Darth Maul. I'm so fucking sick of him. <laughs> like, I'm not. Show me more. Did Mauler and Theory see Sydney Sweeney diss on Madam Web on Saturday Night Live? I love her even more now. I did not. Yes. There's a clip where she says, you know me from Euphoria and everyone she is. And then she says, you have not seen me in Madam Web. Which is funny as fuck to make fun of, you know. Madam Web is just a shit show, so I'm glad everyone's sort of just like, ah, fuck it. You it got is. a meme on it. You got to roll yeah. with the punches. Great. Is she in Madam Web? Yes. yes. They don't take advantage of her in that film Past at that. all. She doesn't look like herself. Oh, I don't know who she is. She, I guess obviously an actor. She's blonde. She's got massive tits. That's pretty much all you need to know. Once again, you've proved if you'll excuse me. That's not even me being. I didn't say that this time. I didn't. That wasn't me. Being like crazy about like the description. People love her because she's blonde. She's she's pretty. She's got massive tits and she's not. Well, I mean, she. I mean, not to, but she's been going viral the past few days for her boobs. Like that. That's, that's the past that year. Yes, yeah. well, I mean, it, I, I feel like the wheels just discovered it, Ryan, with the amount of like people who would commenting on his Saturday Night Live. Let me search this up. What's her name? I'm Sydney. People. Sydney, Sydney Sweeney. Nice name. I spelled it wrong. Boobs. Whoa, yep. Okay. Nice. Uh, anyone who remembers playing the OG Battlefront 2 and remembers old Machinima videos knows about a little series called A Clone Apart that was made. I never saw that. John Blank. <sighs> What's up, Knight? The thing that confused me about Ravis is how did he die? He cannot die. His race can repeat, repair unless you destroy every part of his body. Yeah, he's like, sell. So it doesn't really make sense. Hello. I'm Ray Skywalker. Nice, Matthew. We read that one. That's um, very happy for you. Mm. That's awesome. For Pete's sake, cancel Disney+. Plus. Well, 
What do you guys think about them moving everything to Hulu? Desperation. Maybe Mahler would like clone arcs like the conspiracy. They are Katie Lucas arcs more than Floney ones. She also wrote for the Night Sisters, I think. Yeah, I'll give it all a chance. You never know. Yeah, he's going to watch it eventually. Who is Thrawn? Seriously, if you haven't read the novels, who is Thrawn as a character? We've had three seasons of him in TV shows, and I have no clue why he does anything besides Empire Good or what he wants. I mean, going strictly from Ahsoka is pretty awkward, isn't it? Because he's almost like famous in universe for being who he is. And then we meet him and he's crap. And so it's like, <laughs> what's the deal? Like, So maybe season two will fix it. Maybe. Dune 84 was a better adaptation. Oh. Dune 84. So the uh, they Lynch fit one? More, they fit more random shit in there. Um, was that like a revised version? No, Dune, Dune 1984 is the David Lynch one, yeah. um, which is like notorious for like how wild and weird it is. And I mean, the book is wild and weird too, but they do fit a lot more stuff in there. Palpatine bloodline lives on as fake Skywalker. Indy has to save Hitler. All <laughs> MCU heroes are dead. Does he save Hitler? Yeah, he, at one point in the film, it is clear that he needs to save Hitler. Yes. Really? Do you wow. want to know how? Like, it's the, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm so the bad guy in that film wants to go back in time and like stop Hitler from making particularly stupid decisions in World War II. So he wants to kill him and like take over. And so Indy needs to stop him from going back in time to prevent, you know, Germany from winning the war potentially by doing that. And so in a sense, you could argue Indy needs to prevent, he needs to save Hitler from being killed, <laughs> which is funny as fuck to think about. Deconstructed or debased modern Disney storytelling is morally bankrupt. Bob just dumped his shares. Yeah, Bob Never. actually dumped a lot of shares, yeah. Never watch Indiana Jones 5. That film is abomination. Bob dumped a lot of Disney shares? Yeah, like 90% of his over the last year. What? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it doesn't look good coming off on a big annual shareholders meeting. However, I will say, you know, there is reasons. There are, like, tax reasons people could do that, especially if he gets paid in Disney stocks. I don't fucking know. But just from the from the outside looking in, yeah, it doesn't look good. Uh, for context, Fenring was the Emperor's personal assassin and a failed attempt at the Kwisatz Haderach. So he's Paul, essentially. He was the one that essentially that decided to step aside and let Paul get to the Emperor. Man, I know nothing about Dune. Yeah, that's for Ryan, really. Mm -hmm. Theory and Ryan, who are your top three favorite Star Wars authors and your favorite books by them outside of Zon Thrawn? Oh, hi, Maul. Okay. Hello. Mulk. Mulk. Uh, I think James Luceno is really good. You know, obviously Drew Carption, but that's Bane. Um, oh, you said I can't include Bane. Uh, yeah, Drew Carption, James Luceno. Uh, I really like Troy Denning. Um, Luceno's great. Michael Stackpool is fucking phenomenal. He did all yeah, the Rogue Michael Squadron Stack. books. Um, so I, I love Stackpole. Aaron Alston as well. Uh, rest in peace, Aaron Alston. He passed away years ago. But he did some X-Wing novels as well, as well as some other things in some series that I really like. Um, Matthew Stover. Yeah, Revenge, of, like Revenge of the Sith novelization. Love that. Yeah. Um, but then he also did... Uh, did he do Dark Lord Shadow. Rise of Darth Vader? Or who did that one? That's I think Lucino. that was James Lucino. Yeah. I think uh, he also did Shatterpoint. Shatterpoint, yeah, which is a weird one. That's a weird book. Very just because, like, the way it's written is a mace book. Um, yeah. So I'm sure you're all over that one. And like uh, a Predator. Kind of, yeah. Just going in the jungle and shit and all these, like, weird beasts. and You get all the journal entries from him and shit, which is kind of, a like, an interesting yeah. insight into him. It was a different different pace. It, yeah, it's a totally different Star Wars book than yeah, it wasn't every other one you'll it. pick up. Yeah. Um, Oh, geez, what was I like I Jedi. I Jedi is in first person. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, it's a weird read. What was the one with? Oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. He was so great to interview. 
Uh, he's much older. He wrote the uh, the book for A New Hope. I don't know oh, are you talking Edgar about? Uh, oh, why, why am I thinking? Edgar you're Edgar talking about the person did Splinter the Mind's Eye as well. Splinter the Mind's Eye, yeah. Um, he has like three names. It's it's it's. There's an abbreviation in the middle one. Passed um, away recently, didn't he? What? Um. Hold on. I know he was fighting with cancer. I I. Alan Dean Foster. He passed. I want to make sure before I just say he's dead. Oh no. no he's still, he's still alive. He's still alive. All right. But I, I had heard he was like had a health problem, so sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, cool. Ooh, sorry. He's okay. He's okay. All right, okay. Yeah, he did Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which Splinter of the Mind's Eye was meant to be a sequel to Star Wars if George didn't get to do more movies, basically. Um so like if if he was able to do like a super low budget thing, Splinter of the Mind's Eye kind of would have been it. It's it was way different. Yeah. Published in what, 78, 1978 yeah, or something? Some, yeah, it was yeah, that was totally different. That was like Luke and Leia running to get this kyber crystal that was like unbelievably overpowered, and then Vader gets his hands on it and ends up shooting force lightning and then falling into like this abyss. Well <laughs> <laughs> it was it was pretty cool. Um Yeah, that was supposed to be between four and five. But no, yeah, so he he wrote another one. I can't remember. I can't remember what it was called, but it was a prequel. It was with Obi Wan and Anakin during Episode Two, or just after. Um, the Sands of Something. Uh, Do you remember this? I have been looking for this fucking Phantom Menace deleted scene, the one about Obi Wan and the lightsaber, and I can't still find looking it. Looking for that, I can't find the actual scene anywhere. It's like it's been like fucking yeeted from history, but I do have like. There's story things of it. There's script descriptions. They filmed the fucking thing. I know I've seen it. Um, right, Approaching Storm. That's it. God. Why the fuck can't I find it? Approaching Storm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Boom. Right there. It's been deleted from the archives. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Funch Fries. Has it actually been deleted? Like, I can't... I don't understand why I... I think I might... I have the I have the bonus disc DVD. We could probably fire that up. I'm going to have to, I've like, never pull out my it. fucking Blu-ray or whatever. Like, here, yeah. here's a screenshot from it. Like... Like, here's a screenshot from it. Like, of Obi-Wan's, like, fucked up lightsaber. What? Like, sorry, master. The water fried my weapon. Obi Wan pulls out his burnt laser sword handle. Qui Gon inspects his Jar Jar pulled himself out of the mud. Qui Gon, you fried to turn off your power again, didn't you? Obi Wan nods sheepishly. Won't take long to recharge. Unless I hope you learn my young bad one. Yes, master. Deleted scene from Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. Like, this is a real what? fucking thing, and I've seen it before. I've seen it with my fucking eyes, but um, I can't find the video anywhere. But it is like very much. Again, it is very, if you had had that and you could see the kind of callback then to in uh, episode in Attack of the Clones when yeah, Obi Wan's yeah, yeah. lecturing Anakin about his lightsaber, it's Dude, very beautiful. similar. What the hell? I never saw this. The Phantom Menace, uh, Obi Wan lightsaber deleted. I wonder if I could find. Someone it. says it wasn't a T. Uh, it wasn't a deleted scene. It was in the Lego Star Wars the video game. I'm telling you, I fucking saw this. Like I've seen that sequence. I don't know where I saw it. I don't know how I saw it, but I, I did. It wasn't in the Lego game. It was like fucking real. Yeah, dude. Someone even on Reddit is saying this. Am I imagining this episode, the deleted scene? Now, maybe, like, maybe they're, maybe it was unfinished VFX, or maybe they decided to finish some of the deleted scenes in effect. I, I don't know. But people are saying, yeah, it was in a comic. Each character had their own comic, and the one quiet. I've seen it. I'm telling you. Um, but I don't know why I can't find it anywhere. To pull up my fucking old ass DVDs. Here, 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 here. I got it. I got it. You got the video? Yeah. No way. This is from a video game. You're going to get hit. 
from John Williams. Have you seen anyone else like me? Me, <laughs> Sassy. <laughs> No, because it might be a cutscene from the actual game. I, what I saw wasn't the game. What I saw was the actual scene. <clears throat> no, I know, um, I know, but it might be like a cutscene that was in the game. It's so it's basically while they're, um, you know how Obi Wan is fucking when Here. they're in when they're in the Here. forest of Naboo when they're in the fucking swamps. You know how Obi Wan is fucking running towards Qui Gon when he takes out the the battle droids. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason yeah. he's running to him like is because his lightsaber's not working. Who are you, Mister Jar Jar Binks? Yeah, so it's like after this. And then he's supposed to go to... Okay, but it's working. I gotta find this. This is bugging me. They, they, just, they swim. It, it's it's like before that. Like, Obi-Wan is in fucking... Hold on. I know it's before that, but like maybe in the game they put the cutscene somewhere. Oh, what the hell, man. Damn it. Here, check this out. You can see... Uh... Here's uh first two pictures you see are from episode one illustrated screenplay and the comic adaptation. The rest of the stills were found here and sent to me. This is where like he's in the water of like before it like before he pops out, it doesn't fucking work. Jar Jar's introduction. Some more pictures you won't see in the film. I don't fucking know. I'm gonna be. That's on my life mission now is to find that shit. Anyway, no, because find like, it look, at some point. Because look, people are talking about it too. I've heard it and seen about a picture in various books about a scene where Qui Gon and Obi Wan sneak away down to Naboo in Episode One with the Trade Fed arm, Army. Obi's lightsaber gets wet or something, and Qui Gon lectures him about it. Does anyone know about this scene? This was in 2007, bro. Yeah, 2007. It's fucking out there somewhere. It was in the video game Jedi Power Battles. Or one of them from PlayStation, I can't remember which it was. Supposedly to be in the deleted scenes, but Lucas probably didn't think it was necessary. Yeah, so it's in one of the games. Like, I know Revenge of the Sith game has some extra deleted scenes that are not in the film or in the bonus discs. It was in the novel, but not the movie. We doesn't... Wet doesn't affect lightsabers. Remember Obi-Wan fighting Jango in the rain? Yeah, but it wasn't submersed. But then also you have, uh, whatchamacallit, Kit Fisto, who is fighting underwater with his lightsaber. I'm trying wow. to find any scenes, shot, more pictures of it. Oh, dude, this is, yeah, it's going to bug me. Chat, can you guys help out? Maybe tag us on Twitter or something. A mystery for another day, maybe, but we'll figure it out. Back in 1999, I printed out a bit more from a website I had saved from papers in Star Wars, and I just scanned it. It's my speculation, but the author seems to have gathered some interesting info. Right there. Jin covers the weaponless Kenobi from Stap Fire. Yes. That's why Obi-Wan is running right there, because his lightsaber's fucked up. That's why he's not, like, just fighting him himself. Sorry, Master. The swamp fried my lightsaber. He pulled it out. He pulled out his big, his big. He pulled out his weapon. <laughs> the business. He pulled out his big black <laughs> cock. <laughs> the business like. end was blackened. Wait, what? The business end was blackened and burned. Qui Gon took a look. Yeah, it's all fucked up. Qui Gon took a look from him and gave it a cursory inspection. You forgot to turn off the power again, didn't you, Obi-Wan, his friend asked. Obi-Wan nodded sheepishly. It appears so, Master. It won't take long to recharge, but it will take some time to clean it up. I trust you have fully learned your lesson, my young Padawan. Yes, Master. Obi-Wan accepted the proffered lightsaber with a chagring look. 
chagrined. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, so it's there. That's I cool. didn't just make it up. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that, man. That's really dope. Uh, Theory and Ryan, who are your top three first? Oh, we read this one. I've uh, been playing OG Battlefront 2, and yo, the Asajj Ventress DLC is a beast. Ventress wields her sabers like nunchucks. That's dope. Hmm. What's up, Dirty Nap? Member of 38 months. Hey, Ryan, listen to the Heir to the Empire audiobook after hearing you talk about it and really liked it. Wondering what book I need to listen to next. Uh, I put in the chat earlier, but Dark Force Rise in is the next one. And then The Last Command. I need a comic from Legends about a Jedi called Jenny Talls who defeated an army of stormtroopers. By the way, Andor is like the movie Thinker, Taylor, Soldier Spy. I mean, Tinker, Taylor, Soldier Spy. Kind of. I don't know if I'm familiar with Jenny that Tals? comic you're talking about. Isn't Jenny Talls the uh, that girl that was like flirting with Han in the cantina? I don't remember that comic book. There's a lot of comics, though. Jenny was a human female from Mos Espa on the desert planet of Tatooine. Is there any picture of her with Han anywhere? No, I don't see anything. Are you on the canon or the Legends tab? I just typed it into uh, Google. Oh, I thought you were on like Wikipedia or something. Talls. Okay, let me go to Legends now. Let's see. She was a human female bee girl who was frequently seen as Chalamun's spaceport cantina in Mos Eisley, attempting to hitch. Oh, yeah, she is with Han. She's the chick who's flirting with him. Yeah, where's this? She's. Seen flirting with Han at the cantina shortly before Solo was hired by Obi Wan, leading Solo to dismiss her so he could do business. Get away! Yeah, that's cool. I don't know anything about her being a fucking Jedi and army of stormtroopers. I, that's news to me. No, but me so don't think so. You think we should just submit and be thankful to you and be thankful, do you? Uh, yeah, that's a great way of taking exactly what I was talking about and spinning it into your own fucked up narrative. Sounds good. I think Thanks he was talking to, I think he was talking to me. He's a big salacious crumb fan. <laughs> All right. Well, then my apologies. <laughs> I hope so. Now that EA is gone, we'll finally get the game we all want. Star Wars Omega. <laughs> <laughs> It should be 10 times harder by your bad decisions. <laughs> uh, yeah, sounds like a... You can already imagine the main menu. Way. She like pops her head up. She's like, hey there. Let's get started. Press play. Like, Press no. X to fire. <laughs> oh no, a stormtrooper. We're too slow, Wrecker. You gotta hold down L3 to sprint. Oh, Luke, Darth Vader. Oh, Luke, I can ride Batcha. He's my mount. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the holocron. <laughs> <laughs> if you collect all 50, you unlock a new costume. Oh, look, I use the force now shoots lightning i think that's why she's so good at gambling <laughs> someday there will be memes a dog a kid and a clone walk into a bar enough this people would have to watch it to understand the meme so i guess this podcast has such diversity of thoughts and opinions and it's so refreshing honestly it started kind of awkward but charming now it's just a blast i think it's the best he's the best podcast I hope we made oh, it awkward but charming. It's the yeah, biggest Star weird. Wars podcast on YouTube. Hell yeah. Is it? it real. I'm just making that up, but probably. <laughs> okay, say it until someone stops you legally. Just speak it into existence. 
It probably not the best. is. Not the best, but the biggest. It probably is. Hey, I mean, if I don't know who else in... has a weekly Star Wars. I mean, I know a couple of people, but not not many people who get like two or three thousand people watching. Yeah, and like, and this is a dead ass time, man. Three thousand, three thousand five hundred people. Yes. Yeah. Probably is the biggest. Sick. Yeah. All thanks to you guys watching. Yeah. Theory you thinking is not consistent. Judge equally. How's it not consistent? Star Wars isn't consistent. It's for kids. Tell me you missed ninety. Huh, we're back here. Tell me you missed ninety percent of the cartoons from mid '80s to 2005 without telling me you missed eighty percent of the cartoons from mid '90s to 2005. <laughs> kids' content absolutely can be mature. BTAS was amazing. What's BTAS? Batman, Batman animated the animated series. series. Yeah, sure, it was amazing. My favorite part of the super chat is that you missed ninety percent of the cartoons from mid eighties to two thousand five, and then he missed eighty percent of the cartoons from the nineties to two thousand five. <laughs> That's my favorite part about it. <laughs> he flipped them. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, X Men animated series, which obviously that's going to be you know. Okay, yeah, very soon. that doesn't that doesn't mean I missed. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, if Filoni is the inheritor of George's legacy, shouldn't we hold all his projects to high standards? Yeah, listen. I don't give a fuck about a dog going in a cantina, all right? That's that's it. That's where it, that's, that's all. It's not a big deal. I don't care. That's all it is. It doesn't mean I haven't seen the X-Men or Batman. Fuck. Batcha. <laughs> All right, fine. holocrons. <laughs> M count. Oops, you didn't find all the holocrons. You don't know how to do this. Don't worry, I can do everything. I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up the stars on the ground to increase your M count. Here you go. Oh my god. But, like in reality, just real quick to back up to the episode, I think the reason that she's so good at gambling is because she's force sensitive. Uh, kill me. Like unless like your other like reason is then she's just fucking incredible at everything, right? And I think she's incredible at everything because she's force sensitive, which is a fucking problem, but I think that's... I didn't even bring up the fact that she was amazing at gambling. I was just like, whatever, she's probably some gambling prodigy, and they're going to reveal it in episode 10,000. <laughs> yeah, it's like... There was a new Star Wars card game, too. It wasn't Sabacc. I saw Star Wars posted it. Yeah, I didn't know what the fuck that was. It was something else. Something new. If Disney wants Johnny Depp back for Pirate 6, he, Orlando, Kira, and Jeffrey should be the main characters. Jack shouldn't be a side character. I agree. Do you think they'll ever get him back or he's done? There's a new rumor out there that they want him as like a side character in this new I thought black, he black female focused one. Um, he did. I mean, he did say I wouldn't go back to Disney. During his trial, said I wouldn't go back to Disney for $300 million and a thousand alpacas, whatever the fuck he said. Um, but at the same time, I think time can heal wounds, and I think money can also heal wounds. Yeah. So right. I think if they actually wanted him back and they made him a real offer and it was something that was interesting to him, I think he'd, I think he'd consider doing it. For sure, man. Especially for the fans, too. So many mm -hmm. people that really love that character. Ryan, what's your favorite book of the X-Wing series? Um, uh, Wedge's Gamble's the second book. That one's really fucking good. Uh, I like the Back to War. That's the fourth book as well. I don't know. Those would probably I, be just I, I, my would, head. I would say Ryan knows more about legends than anyone that I know. Well, I like I know a lot about certain shit. There's other stuff like in terms of comic books, I feel like I have barely scratched the surface in terms of like comic book stuff because there was just so many different series out there. I think I know comics pretty well, but and those are stuff you kill. Here, and those right. are like so hard to get your hands on because they're expensive and shit like that. But I, I appreciate the kind words, though. Yeah, yeah no, there's no, a that, that, there's a lot that, to know because there's just so much shit. Yeah, no, that goes for like any Star Wars freaking YouTuber, or TikToker, or whatever. Like, I think Ryan is uh, king, definitely king when it comes to uh, knowing his shit. 
At least the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh, <laughs> the Star Wars EU. He's a queen to his king, Salacious Crumb. That's nah, I'm marrying Jabba. Get it straight. Right. But hopefully it's the time at which, hopefully I can wait until uh, he changes into a female. And then you can so marry okay. Jabba and Salacious Crumb still be your king, ultimately. King Salacious Crumb. Yeah. Salacious Crumb is his side piece. Mm -hmm. Currently in the middle. Once, all right? You, Get out you... of my life, Salacious. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so you played hard to get. Yeah. He got me once. How many more times he needs me? It's that anyway, smile. He's gonna work hard for it. That damn it's smile. That <laughs> yeah. Currently you don't like middle. you don't like to hear that when you like maybe can't perform. You know what I mean? That's the last thing you want when you have performance anxiety because you don't want to fuck a little lizard. Is that fucking laugh? All right. They work for you, man. I like how this is warrant you being like, oh fuck, this will get clipped. It's like the <laughs> 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 fuck lizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't care at this point. Uh, it's like the the most mild noble thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Curly, the, the only one who took the question seriously. I answered it too. It's like I get bent out of shape over the lore breaking of that versus like fucking anything else. Uh, it's honestly and you, you the care about me fucking salacious crumb, but you don't care about a dog walking <laughs> to a bar. No, I don't give yeah. a shit. <laughs> Whatever. It's all good. Yeah, it's Disney owned now. I hope they let the EU continue one day and maybe adapt these stories into animation. I hope a lot of things. Yeah. It's so currently in the middle of Jedi Order books. Those are the real sequels. Yeah, I love New Jedi Order. It's a little bit of a darker turn. It's like real. People are dying. Galaxy is actually in peril. I love it. They say Dune 2 better than Star Wars. Your take? I haven't seen it. Maybe I'll go see it this weekend. Wait, isn't like better than A New Hope Star Wars? There was some people when it first came out, there were some critics that were comparing it to Empire and to like Two Towers and shit, saying it's one of the best movies ever made. I, I wouldn't go that far. I think it's really fucking good. Listen, I, I, I praised it as well, but where's it going to be in two months' time? Let's have a look. I'll be curious. Dude, Not in terms of box office, just in terms of people talking about it. Gary and Mahler are very critical of the prequels, especially Gary, who is a hardcore OG fan. He hates the idea of midi chlorians, but I like it for what it is. I like it for what it is, too. I think it's cool. I think I said on the... Because I do Real BBC the following day for these, and I said on the last one that, like, I feel like the OT Puritan out of us three. Um, is you? Yeah. Which is funny, because you usually find the older a person is, the more likely they're an OT Puritan. And on Real BBC, obviously, like, Az and Gary are both that sort of Star Wars fan where they mm -hmm. they tolerate the prequels but they don't like them, I don't think. I like the prequels, but I um <laughs> I don't like uh oh, I don't think they're good. I like them a lot though. I it, like I would love to have, you know, like see a redo of them but from George uh to get everything tweaked and put in the right place because I think the story they're telling could be incredible. If they were like straightened up for lack of a better term, um, but like you know, like the sequels, there's just nothing there. Like, I'd burn it down. We need to yeah. undo everything, basically. I love the prequels, I think they certainly have their flaws, but I, I fucking love them. Yeah, I agree with that. I think everything has their flaws, but I, I love them so much. Hey, Theory, love your videos, keep up the good work. Looking forward to getting my own saber one day. Thank you, man. Mahler just finished watching the Nerdonymous is was definitely eye opening. Love your Force Awakens video and Ryan POD was a hundred. Hey. And yeah. Thank you. Uh, PO, POD. Thanks. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Uh <laughs> the penis of despair. Pieces of dog shit. Uh I don't POD. P penile of discourse. F phallus. I don't dicks. know what the fuck that means. Does Gun and Feige... What, does Gun equal Feige 2008 success? I will have to wait and see, man. Don't know. Don't know. Theory, it's time to watch Hot D. Also, Ryan, you a wog or shellback? I'm a wog. Sorry, Heine Hole. Path of Destruction? They might mean Darth Bane Path of Destruction. That's probably what they mean. Hopefully. Mm. Hey, Theory, do you keep your Star Wars celebration photo in your room? Celebration photo. 
Oh, with Hayden? No, it's downstairs in the other room. The Jedi Master. All right. Nice. That's not even clever, bro. <laughs> and two bucks? Come on. Idea for merch. All three of you in a convertible headed down Route 66 towards Disney to give them a piece of your mind. Come on, make it happen. I mean, that could be funny. Hmm. Need to get some designers for it. What's up? How y'all doing? What's up, Laser Light? What a conversation to join the podcast to. What was that? When was that done? Gotten to salacious crumb territory. <laughs> I ain't saying Ryan's a gold digger, but he ain't messing with no broke nerf herder. Rest in peace, right. salacious crumb. His roommate Rags is gonna be devastated. Aw. He'll make it. The Star Wars franchise lately is like a loved one that's consumed by addiction, repeatedly asking to be trusted despite everyone knowing you shouldn't. That's a good way of thinking about it. Mm. You guys should all check out the series Shogun and discuss it while Star Wars is slow. A masterpiece of a show. Yeah, I want to get Hulu, man. I don't think they got it on Apple, whatever, for uh, Canada. Dune is more Lawrence of Arabia in space than Star Wars in my eyes, says Freddie Litt. Hmm. Yeah, could be fair. Ryan, you know about George's involvement with the mall game and how they placed him in the legacy era I was referring about? I, I don't know exactly the details, but that's that's where I heard the things about, oh, it's a clone type of thing because they were pushing him so far in advance. I think it was when they were talking about that potential mall game. Because the mm -hmm. legacy era obviously is a long-ass time after... Um, I think they would have done a hybrid. I think they would have brought it up, obviously, to make it fit with like Luke and Leia still being alive if they were going to bring Talon into it. George literally got the idea because Darth Talon has tattoos like Darth Maul. Mm -hmm. It was like, they belong together. They're friends. <laughs> Ryan, you're right. Andor is trash. How do you guys feel about Jar Jar becoming a sad clown? I think it's freaking horrible, man. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. When did I say, I don't think Andor is, tr oh, you mean like, I, I don't like the character of Cassie and Andor. I don't think the Andor show is trash. Um, I understand why it might not be accessible to everybody because of the pace. But I mean, I the out of curiosity, Ryan, yes. what do you think they're doing with Cassie and Andor? I, I don't know what they're doing with him as a fucking character. I don't so have any like, fucking idea. You know I thought what I mean? it was pretty explicit. Like he goes from wandering through life, being essentially a ping pong ball of just trying to survive and look out for himself, and then eventually gets radicalized, like by different influences in his life and different events. He's going to go from not caring to caring fully to about being a rebel. Yeah. And you're supposed to see this is this is how the rebellion's born. Well, like, like through this, we see we've seen a lot through all the the different arcs, like how much he's learning and all the different characters he's meeting. Obviously, the manifesto, right, is a huge influence. What happens to his mum? Obviously, the prison, everything with Luthen, like all of these things push him further and further toward being a rebel. Um, I'm not particular; like, he's not my favorite character, but I still recognize like there's a strong arc they're going for there, and they've got a lot of writing to support it. Like I, I have more investment in Luthen, and. Uh, sort of the more like i even i'm more invested sort of in the empire side of things as well i, I like luthan and i like um the idea of deidre or whatever and her being within that imperial power structure and like realizing that there's some fucked up stuff going on do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um like those are the two aspects to me that i enjoy out of it and and to be honest i like seeing at, at a surface level, I like seeing the idea of how office drones, how what life is like for the people yeah. that are the lowest level in this this pyramid that is the power structure of the empire. And I like seeing the idea of what normal people that are just trying to get through every day are kind of going through. There's a lot of good shit like that in Andor that I enjoy. Like that I don't think we've seen a lot in any other era of Star Wars. Or sorry, mm -hmm. in, in any other uh, Star Wars project so far. Are you going to rewatch season one ahead of season two? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, Muller, I remember when Ethan was cheering with the Razor Crest blew up. Fuck yeah, we were. We were so tired of uh, it escapes like unscathed in so many battles. And then there were ones where it gets blown apart, but repaired, repaired like the next day. <clears throat> and uh, we were like, that thing should have been blown up like 10 times. And so when we saw it blown up, we were like, holy shit, consequences. That's amazing. 
but of course we didn't know that the, he would replace his ship with possibly the most ineffective fucking replacement possible. One of them anyway, not like worthless, just compared to the Razor Crest. I would have preferred he actually like pursue finding another Razor Crest than uh, just ending up with the Naboo Starfighter. But yes, we were very happy when that happened because Mando's like fucking slathered in plot armor. It's annoying as hell. So it was his Razor Crest. So oh, literally ordered that thing like a week before. I still haven't opened it. It's been like three years, four years. Uh, op- I ordered that thing before it got blown up. <laughs> and it gets blown up, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? Uh, I've always suspected that Ryan would want to be a hot sugar baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One thing we can all agree, rest in peace, Carl Weathers, of course. Also didn't yep. need to know Peli dated a Jawa, and Andor was okay, but felt like a generic sci-fi flick. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I do, I do but it's all right. Did, did we ever, remind me, did we ever find out what the fuck is going on with Andor's sister? No. Like, I feel like that... I mean, that didn't stay a plot point for very long, right? It, it jump-started yeah. other things. Okay. Like, is she dead? I'm not sure if that exactly what they want to do with that. I'd have to rewatch it if know. to look at the beginning, but it might be something that comes up in season two. I'm not sure. Was she a dancer or something? What she was? I don't know. Andor thought somebody was his sister that was like in a fucking whorehouse or whatever at one point. <laughs> right? Yeah, literally. It's like the first first scene. Literally. Yeah, as as, well, yeah, and then it, what happens, obviously, because him killing those two guys basically sets the rest of the season. Right. And I guess what that's what, like? what maybe I do need to rewatch because I, I don't, I felt like that was like such a big motivating factor was like him finding his sister and like what happened to her and that really gets kind of thrown out the door by the last six episodes. I mean, all of the first episode after he kills them is setting in motion everything he needs to stay hidden and to have alibis and everything. The sister gets dropped pretty quick. Yeah. You guys want to see Boba Fett season two more or Kenobi season two more? (laughs) Fucking hell. I'm going to say Boba two because they could fix it. Uh, Uh Kenobi, we don't need to see any of him. I'll say Boba too because at least Tamara Morrison like understands the first one was a piece of shit and knows his character was done so fucking dirty. Yeah. Um. So that's the only reason I'll say Boba season two. I'll do Kenobi season two, and I want Filoni in charge. Let's see what he can do. You being serious? <laughs> well, I, I you could call me an accelerationist. I think if he was to destroy more of Kenobi, I think you would finally be like, okay. We, be, we must get this man away from Star Wars. And the mid ride would be like, yes. Oh, Ashton, I uh, thanks, man. I wish the best. It's the best for you. And your also dad, that, for service. The, the sequence where the troopers are chasing Mando out of the base and they hit each other and crash, we fucking lost our shit watching that. We thought it was so funny. It was the, the stupid fuckers crash into each other and blow up all of it. It's like... Garbage. And we had people at the time being like, yes, yeah, Stormtroopers are stupid. And I was like... The amount of fucking damage that's been done, man. The stormtroopers, yeah. They're just fucking stupid. They just kill themselves all over the time. It doesn't matter. They're like cartoon fucking rats. <laughs> they just run around exploding. It's a... dumb. Oh, sad. Taker610 says, Mauler, do you remember that scene when those troopers are chasing Mando and a crew out of the base and the troopers hit each other and crash? Yeah, that's what I was just... We, we, we've come a long way from Obi Wan declaring that only Imperial stormtroopers could be that precise. Have you? <laughs> he was outright trolling at that point. <laughs> hey, Star Wars Theory, enjoyed your Vader fan film. I've been wanting to make my own fan films with realistic animation. Do you have any tips on what software to use? Looked at Unreal Engine Five as a possibility. Uh, just get very talented people to do it because they know what they're doing. Um, yeah, we use Unreal Engine Five. There you go. Switch hands so you don't get <laughs> dicked in. <laughs> Theory, if you ever sell clone helmets, I recommend Bounty Helmets. He's from the UK. He's really good. I'm actually working with someone right now, but I don't think I'll be selling any helmets. That is uh, infringing a lot on, on copyright. And uh, I, yeah, I just that's that's too much. Uh, sabers are, that's totally fine. Uh, as long as you don't use copyrighted names and such. But um. <clears throat> Helmets are like a, a face, right? So it's I don't want to go into that territory. It would be cool. It would be awesome. But um, 
Yeah, maybe some ones that aren't, uh, you know, copyrighted. Then, yeah, sure, I'll make some original designs. That'd be sweet, for sure. Difference between stolen and inspired. Dave stole the treasure planet map in Ahsoka. George was inspired by sandworms. Their different map is the same. I heard that a lot, the treasure planet map. I don't really remember it, but I, I did hear. I remember hearing that. It would be like a cool Easter egg because it would be really fucking weird to just steal like <laughs> the, the map, you know? Troy Denning did last night for Halo and a series of books about Blue Team. They're awesome. I'm so glad Paramount didn't adapt any of the books. Twats. The Halo show is something else. You, people hate it, eh? Why? Uh, it's, it's, it's why? Uh, how do I put this? It's just like every other thing <laughs> that's being made of a adaptation of a thing you love. It's it's it just pisses all over Halo. Shit. Who would win in a fight between Dooku and Saruman? Ooh. It's tough. It could be down to just who gets the jump on who, I guess. Or if they just spawned in a room. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say Dooku, but I'm biased. I assume it would be Saruman. Because that motherfucker is pretty powerful. But I guess Dooku is as well. So this is what they're talking about from uh, Treasure Planet really quickly. I can definitely see the uh, I can definitely see the similarities here. I'm sharing my screen. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It doesn't have any audio or anything. Oh, that is a that is quite close. <gasps> and then look at this. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh jeez. I don't really it's a it's a freaking gif, so I can't like fast forward or like pause or anything. I don't fucking know how this works, but I mean hmm. I didn't know. You know. <laughs> this part gets a lot different. Um but yeah, that thing in general does look a fucking lot like it. <laughs> anyway. You know what? I've never seen Treasure Planet. It's good shit. Yeah, I saw it. a fucking, I mean, probably when it came out, but I don't really remember too much about it. Yeah, I heard it was great. Huh. You guys think Anakin would have turned to the dark side if Qui-Gon survived the fight with Maul? No. Also, do you think Dooku would tell him about Palps? Uh, yeah. I think so eventually slyly well i think if qui-gon doesn't die i don't know if dooku gets seduced so i think like there's like there's layers on qui-gon dying and what that means uh because that was kind of dooku's last straw uh in terms of he was really fed up with the jedi and shit and that's what allowed him to be taken advantage of by palpatine um and yeah, I think it would have been a lot different having Qui-Gon train him. It would have been completely different. He would have been there for Anakin, and Anakin needed that extra special bit of care and love. And He needed uh, custom training. Yeah, exactly. I feel, I, well, I feel like Obi-Wan gave that to him a lot. I feel like Obi-Wan was Obi -Wan almost... sucked. I I feel like Obi-Wan Obi was his fucking brother. Yeah, but he he's like this. He's he, like this hybrid brother-father figure. Yeah, but he sucked as a, 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 I feel like the, a mentor the brother, for Anakin. Anakin was such a special case. I think the brother aspect came in way later as well. I think Obi Wan started being much more strict, and it came across as he was trying to teach him in a very by the book way, which is not mm -hmm. what Anakin needed at all. Yeah, but I, I also I think that Obi Wan was, and I feel like everyone gave Anakin a little leeway. Um, and even when there were warning signs of things, they didn't like hammer down too hard on him. Because yeah. this guy's more talented than anybody ever seen. He's prophesied to be the chosen one, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and I don't really know because Qui-Gon is such a different mentor. And he's gonna follow, you know, he's gonna follow his feelings and the way of the force and shit like that, rather than, you know, the strict whatever the Jedi are telling us to do. But would he have been hard enough on Anakin? Probably. Oh, he would have absolutely yeah. And when Anakin had feelings about, you know, Padme, he would probably would have helped him with a lot of that. Uh, cause he, he bent He's the like, rules back so in much. my day, back in my day, they used to let us fuck anybody, you know, 
him right. and tall man yeah. Not not the case anymore. Sorry, Anakin. You're going to have to fucking take care of that on your own. That wasn't a Phantom Menace deleted scene. That was from Lego Star Wars, the video game. I'm telling you, man. They, <laughs> sh they shot it. They Ryan, shot it. We've Ryan's seen. lying eyes. Six hour Phantom Menace. Let's go. Let's do it. I'll do it. Ryan having some serious Mandela effect. It's possible. I've, Thanks, uh, it, it can happen. I'm speaking into existence. Yeah, what's with the dude? You guys remember the Shaq movie? Uh, Sh Shazam, something. Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is everyone saying that didn't exist? What? Yeah, people are saying though it didn't exist. The Mandela effect. But that's 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 like one Google. Like, that's five seconds away. You know. It was Kazam, not Shazam. Kazam, but, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. It was a fucking terrible yeah. movie. <laughs> hey, man, I liked it as a kid. Six years old. Why do you think we like some things as a kid and then we grow up and we don't like them anymore? We become Just mature. Taste changes. Hmm. That's like the most reasonable way of putting it, I suppose. But values will change, right? Um, Your understanding of what is even happening in the thing will change. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, you know, there's all kinds of reasons. I always find it oh, fun shit. to revisit something that you have very specific feelings on, but you haven't looked at it in forever. And then you go back and you're like, what the fuck? This isn't anything like I thought it was. Like a Phantom Menace deleted scene. <laughs> <laughs> Invite Fringy on and then ask him his opinions on ATSV and make sure he answers. Don't let him squirm away. What's ATSV? Across the Spider Verse. Yeah. Wicker Man is on a vendetta to get Fringy to say something controversial about it, I think. Hmm. Do either of you see that movie? Uh, uh, no. no. I went to the theater and I fell asleep. <laughs> so I woke up and I had no idea what had happened. It's uh, it's not, from what I gather, the two newest, like, uh, wait, I might be talking about my ass there, but, you know, the Spider-Man 2 game and Across the Spider-Verse, I feel like both of those have not aged as well as you'd expect them to. As in, like, fan bases when they came out were like, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. and then you look at them now, and most people have gone back to Spider Man 1, the game, <laughs> and not talking about the story. <laughs> and then across the Spider Verse, people have been talking about the canon events, which is no point me fucking bringing up if you don't know what it is. So, when did I, when did I fucking, uh, when's the last time I brought up Ray's? <laughs> there you other go. Than take, to, a shot. take a shot. Other than to talk about Johnny Depp. Potentially playing side role in the black female focus <laughs> pirates movie. He's 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 like one of my biggest supporters. He's a huge troll. I love him. I'll get you drunk if you want. Hell yeah. Not that I'm not paying attention to anything that just happened, but one last thing, because some people in chat know what I'm talking about. That viral thing of Venom, no not Venom, Sandman throwing Spider-Man or whoever. What was it? Miles Morales he was throwing, I can't remember, but he's throwing fucking somebody. Through like a huge thing, and like they come back, it was a huge spectacle thing. And I remember someone asked me, "Is like, oh, you know, doesn't that? What do you think of the game?" And I was like, it's a "Fucking cutscene. I don't know. It's like that could be an Eddie. That could have been a game from fucking ten years ago. Like it makes no difference." And that almost captures the fact that that that's what was going viral about that game so much. It makes me think like that's probably why it's been forgotten already, right? Like there was the nothing opening in the game. fucking cutscene cinematic cutaway. <laughs> where it's like, like it's, Sandman it's, throws Miles Morales a million miles. Yeah, and if that's what's going viral about it, when in the first game, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like when people share scenes from the first game, it's stuff to do with Aunt May, stuff to do with Peter and Doc Ock having their big confrontation. I didn't see any of that for Spider-Man 2, and I've seen a lot of people basically say that the story and that kind of sucks. And I was like, oh shit, okay. I didn't play it. I didn't play it. And I love the first Spider-Man game. And I had, I, I like almost I zero didn't play it, Ryan, on stream. I want to see uh, you play as Miles Morales and Spooderman. I played a little bit of the Spider-Man Miles Morales game. Do you um, love it? I it was like, why wait, is this? Don't mention race. I'm mention trying race. not to. Don't do it. Um, it was like, why <laughs> is this a fucking separate game? You know what I mean? And I just, I didn't. I do not give a fuck about Miles Morales. Yeah, I, I really only care about Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know what this is. SSI Ru. Would sure. you purge the the C Ru? Yeah, they're a they're a basically fucking dinosaurs uh in star wars and yeah i would they're fucking 
villainous. Oh, those old Republic things? Um, I don't. Like not Python? old. No, not like that. Uh, Truce of Baccarat takes place like. Uh, yeah, look at some of the images of these motherfuckers. Truce of Baccarat takes place like days after uh, the Battle of Endor. And mm. uh, they do a temporary truce because they find these fucking guys right here. Oh, those fucking things, yeah. Look at them. You should, yeah, fucking wipe them out. Look at them. Are these people going to be peaceful with you? Fuck these guys. <laughs> Dinosaurs holding fucking guns. Rifles? Fuck. No, fuck that. Hey, uh, Mahler, I have a question for you regarding Andor. Why did the blasters look like AK 47s? Well, some of them did, right? I assume it's just reference yeah, to like the old attack that got used because they were ragtag and scrappy. But I probably would have opted to try and make it look like it's older weaponry, but simultaneously not something as recognizable as the AK 47. That's not something that they would have misunderstood or fucked up. They did that on yeah. purpose. Yeah. They wanted us to believe it's like old tech. I mean, I would say even a lot of stuff in the OT was, you know, based off of like based off of actual real life weapons and modified slightly here or there you know what i mean oh oh we got trolled jimmy is real not the last name oh when is that from uh well I, that well the the last name you used did work so it is an actual character yeah, whatever. <laughs> Joke's on you. Jake's on you. What do they do with Grogu going forward? Think they'll go in for an indie short round dynamic or the OP incoherent baby? Either way, likely won't work. So. Well. Go ahead. Yeah, like, that's the thing. <laughs> um, what are you going to do with him? Are you, because you have to have a drastic age up, right? Because you've established this character clearly ages very slowly, including development and able to speak. So how much into the future would you have to go to get him to actually speak competently like a normal person? Um, are you going to do like an up and find some device to go around his fucking neck to translate Grogu speak into human voice? You've already got the yes, no button. I guess it's not that much of a jump, but I don't know what the fuck they do with him. They make him age. They they turn him into like a teenager or something where he can like walk and talk and do yeah, but things. Wouldn't have to be like fifty years at least. Yes, yeah, jump <laughs> at fifty years, or maybe he goes through Talk a growth spurt. Like... Din Djarin's not gonna be alive then. Well, fuck Din Djarin. He's dead anyways. What? <laughs> There's no point that we have those two. This is what I mean. Any way you fucking slice this shit, wasn't someone suggested a super chat <laughs> tossed Din into a fucking carbonite chamber? And then we could get him aged up 50, 50 Absolutely. years. Later. Absolutely. Absolutely, we could. Why what not? a mess, man. Why not? The fact that, like, one of our opening things is how do we fix the stupid age gap between these two characters? Because they never should have started this way. Maybe he'll get so much testing done from the Empire that they'll uh, inject him with the age accelerating cells or whatever that they put into the clones. And then <laughs> Grogu will be like, oh. aged, you know, a uh, hundred years. Do you know, I would pay a lot to have Ryan appear in one of these films and kill Grogu himself. That would be really funny. <laughs> like, we should crowdfund it. <laughs> Y'all are vicious. <laughs> I would love to. Like, there would... Almost no amount of money would be too much for that. You wouldn't be able to kill him with a Disney lightsaber anyway. You'd have to, have to find something else. <laughs> theory <laughs> savers. You find theory savers. Just buy a theory saver. Mm -hmm. Jenny Tall's read... Uh, Genitals. Funny. Uh, it's weird on. that Jenny Talls is uh, an actual character in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite Star Wars creature. Oh, excuse me. Someone asked favorite Star Wars creature. What's your favorite Star Wars species? I like the Zabrax. They're cool. You mean like alien species? Yeah. yeah. Yuzong Vong are fucking killer, dude. It's okay. tough to beat these on yeah. Vong. Yeah. Um, Ricardins are dope. Yeah. I assume we're, like, we're discounting Gungans because everyone would go for that. We're going to go for something else. No, you can go for whatever you want. It's, it's what you like. Hmm. Ewoks, probably, for you. For me? 
For Mahler, Mahler's an Ewok guy. Well, surely I'd go for like Ithorians because they're long. I was I was actually just gonna say Ithorians. Are um, you tall? Um, <laughs> He's an yeah. eight foot tall tentacle monster. How tall are you? Like six, six, four, six, five. What the fuck? It's Pretty fun tall. being tall. You can that's reach stuff. Fucking cool, man. Yeah, that's awesome. What about Zeltrons? Bunch of whores. Who, who are those guys? Bunch of who's? Whores. <laughs> Hold on. Are they? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. You just look up some Zeltrons. Whoa. See? Whores. Are they actually, though? I mean, a lot of them fuck, yeah. I mean, Jesus. Are they, what, why? I don't even know if I could show that. Uh, yeah, okay. They're like literally mm -hmm. in like neon bikinis in the jungle in Star Wars. Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's do it. They have like, uh, they actually like produce pheromones um, to like, you know, attract suckers. What do they do? Kill them? Oh, they fuck them and rob them or do whatever. Who, who knows? Oh, okay. Depends okay. on the person, I suppose. Right. I see. Depends on the Zeltron. I'm not going to, you know, say an entire race of people or I'm just saying in general they're whores. Rain is descending into a southern accent. Does it mean me? Did I have a southern we're accent? We're kind of with your, um, <laughs> with your Omega. You were kind of going through. Yeah, yeah it, it, it sometimes rain. slips away. How you doing, Rain? What's going on? It was a joke, but now I'm officially invested in the Omega game now. <laughs> Guys, we can kill the Emperor, but instead, let's go free Hatcher's sister. <laughs> Oh no, you can't open the door unless you collect all the holocrons. Your M count is too low to access this section. You need to up your M count. We need to do three kind things for strangers before we can go through this blast door. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. No, Crosshair, don't kill them. No. <laughs> we need to help everything. the Imperials. They're people too. Press X to stop Crosshair from murdering an innocent citizen. <laughs> Evening, gents. Did we play Akbar's theme? What is Ocean that? Ocean Man. <laughs> there is no age gap with Bobo and Omega. They're the same age. Aren't they? I'm not sure exactly um, when Omega was born. Or if she has accel like she doesn't have accelerated aging, right? Have we confirmed that at all? Uh, no, I don't think she does. I mean, they're probably pretty damn close. I assume Bobo would be a little bit older because Bobo is from the first batch of clones, unaltered. I don't know when Omega's from. Sup, Ryan's long Mauler theory. Uh, Ray Skywalker based her hilt design on Mace Windu's. That's why her personal saber is shaped like a big... All right. Big black deal dough. All right. Deal dough. Have you seen the animation Baby Freaking Yoda by Crazy Boris Production? It's reaction to Mando's... Oh. Why are you? What are you doing? You want someone, to someone asked. Down? Some, someone asked. For do, me do, 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 do. Uh, have you seen animation Baby Freaking Yoda by Crazy <laughs> Boris Production? His reaction <laughs> to Mando Three. No, I have not seen that. Animation, interesting. Very interesting by Apprentice. John Jackson Miller is another good author of the OGEU. His book, Kenobi, is what the live action show <coughs> should have been based on. Yeah, see, that one was much better. Was that John Jackson Miller? Kenobi wrote. He wrote I Kenobi? do think John Jackson Miller was Kenobi, yeah. That was. Yeah, no, like, I like that book. That book is perfect. It's exactly what it should be. Yeah. It's Obi Wan dealing with his fucking basically PTSD from what he had to do to fucking Anakin and questioning it, what he, what he did wrong, what he could have done better, all these things, his failures. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, trying to accomplish this mission that 
Yoda set him off on, which is to be able to communicate with Qui-Gon. Yeah. And in the middle of it, he is still a Jedi and he's still like drawn towards helping people. And he ends up helping this small little village escape, you know, the shit that's been going on with these Tuscan raids. First live stream I've been able to catch, keep up the good work, and F the sequel trilogy, may the force be with you. Thanks, John. Thank you, Pope. Bless you. Watch the Melodica cover Jurassic Park of the theme. It was uploaded 12 years ago by P.L. Pilo. It's 33 seconds long. Have any of you seen Star Wars prequel? Unnecessary censorship. It's a YouTube video and it's hilarious. I have not. Probably why they just like Star bleep out things so it sounds like they're swearing. Yeah, there's a lot of potential for that. Oh, I see. I created a, uh, what was it called? A um, a sitcom, Star Wars sitcom. So like every time someone goes into a, a scene, they're like, <laughs> live audience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who else is hyped for Helldivers tonight, boys? I am. I already got the stream up, ready to go. Y'all going to teleport after the stream. I'm curious, Ryan, who would you fan cast as Githany from the first Darth Bane book? My pick is Sydney Sweeney. Wow, man. Sydney Sweeney's probably a pretty good bet. I can't say I've thought about that too much. Um, yeah, Githany's a, a seductress, a temptress. Who uh, tried to get Bane on her side? Um, Sydney Sweeney sounds good, but I haven't really thought about it too much. It's a good one, Samra. I think she's blonde, so might be wrong. What's up, Samra? Acolyte takes place fifty to hundred years before the Phantom Menace, and it's already a retcon because in Phantom they say a Sith wasn't seen in a millennium. May says they would. Suspect a Sith, but there's a bunch of Sith in the show. Yeah, one, I don't understand how there's a bunch of Sith. Um, two, the caveat would have to be that the Jedi are not able to find out about them in this series. Yeah. So there's probably going to be a couple times where they think somebody finds them and they end up killing them before they get to report, shit like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that'll, I'm sure we'll see that. Yeah. But even then, like, wouldn't, like, Plagueis would know about them, wouldn't he? Palpatine would probably know about them. Don't you think? Palpatine would know about the Acolytes or whatever, or whatever this fucking thing is? Yeah, the, the, the Sith that are around this time. I, mean, I have Plagueis no idea what that them. means. I have no idea with these dark side force users. I have no idea what Sith are, like, in this iteration. There could be a fucking million of them. We don't know. Like, I have no idea what they're going to do with them. Andor really flesh out the Star Wars world. I bet a lot of people of Ferrix are on the trend trend ports escaping Hoth. The true hero OG A New Hope, the mechanic who loaded Luke's proton torpedo correctly. Well, I mean, yeah, that guy helped. <laughs> like, for sure. You know, what if story? Hero, but... What if he loaded it backwards? <laughs> what if he threw a potato in there? Yeah. As a massive prequel fan, Paul's fall in Dune is everything I wanted Anakin's to be, which makes sense considering... Oh, fuck, now you ruined for me. God damn it. You ruined what? His fall. Revenge of the Sith? No. <laughs> he said Paul's fall in Dune, too. <laughs> like, theory's so like, he falls? How, could you, how could you spoil Revenge well, of the Sith, man? <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair... Dune was written in like 1965. All right, well, so, I didn't read the you know, book. You're getting spoiled by a 60 year old. But <laughs> they, like they talk, he, he talks about his visions in Dune Part One and what he sees. So, hey, Theory, hope everything's well. Love and appreciate all the hard work and passion that you put into all you do. Just wanted to say thank you for being my first hand book into Star Wars. I'll be forever grateful. Oh, well, thanks for watching. The, I'm yeah. hoping that Ryan one day will start to make lore content too. Because he would literally take over. The uncrowned king. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta fit in my schedule. Just make another channel. Thank you, film girl. The, uh, I don't know. Star Wars Theory. Ryan Theory. <laughs> Star Wars Theory 2.0. Yeah. Uh, what the Star Wars theory? Theories, plural. Yeah, Star Wars Theories. That'd be good, actually. Star Grift. 
with Theory and Mahler and Ryan and Gary and Drinker and Rags and Fringy and Az and Stitch and Sam. <laughs> Stitch and Sam and George Lucas and Rich Evans. Stitch and Sam. <laughs> Fringy Stitch, Stitch and Sam. <laughs> Dude, George Lucas, I like how and George Lucas and Rich Evans is the like the Rich, Rich Evans, Evans is like the exclamation point. Who's Rich Evans? Uh, you ever watch uh, uh, Red Letter Media? No, <laughs> but I know them. Yeah, yeah, Rich. I got the NJO series. I'm reading it once. I finish Survivor's Quest and the second book in the Hand of Thrawn. They're so they're fun so far. Nice. Glad you're enjoying them, Stephen. Big fan of you all. Between Marvel and Star Wars, which universe is more fucked? Oh, uh, we have this question a lot. It's tough. I think Star Wars. Wars. Mm. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> if they talk about the MCU, it's it's the main reason people say is because Star Wars is legacy. The MCU hasn't been going for as long, right? But like just raw so. fuckage. Um, every character in the MCU, and there was a lot of them, has just been annihilated. I feel like Star Wars is close to that, but like you know, you know what was done to Luke? If they've done that to every single Star Wars like significant character, which they've done to a lot, to be fair. I think the issue with Star Wars more so than Marvel is that um, Marvel, whether you want to talk about multiverse or just a straight reboot, comic books over the course of the last hundred years, whenever. Like they, they're constantly rebooting and doing new stories, whether it's different author, different artists, like the characters change over time. People are used to seeing a bunch of different iterations of these characters. There is no multiverse in Star Wars. There's one story of Star Wars, right? Um, so I feel like the fix is a little more difficult. Um, whereas you could literally for the MCU, they could have some fucking culminating event and um all of a sudden you could come out of that with an entirely new cast of these heroes. Of course, you'd have to do it the right way. And you still need good writers for those things to make it good. But I, I feel like that's easier to fix than Star Wars is. Because in order to fix Star Wars, you'd literally need to erase a decade worth of storytelling. No, they're on their way in the MCU. And pretend it never yeah. happened. But in the MCU, yeah. you can do that and pretend that and with it happening, and it could still make sense in universe. If that makes thing sense. is, I think that Star Wars is always ready to be hyper successful, while the MCU has like floated up and then sank superheroes as a uh, yeah, successful sort of. Yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting question. It really depends on exactly what what way they're referring to. Well, like Ryan and I agreed on earlier, I think Star Wars is three good movies away from getting the majority of the magic back. I, I really agree with what Ryan said. And it's not hard to do. I, I feel like they think it's just some huge obstacle. It's really not that difficult. You just create some good content, a few good movies, and you're you're good. That's it. Yeah, the thing Easy. is, even even with that, like with it being like get back to being successful again, it still doesn't erase all the damage that's been done to the legacy characters. No, it'll never erase it. But they could, right? They could fix things. I mean, they could but, but, shift the attention. Yeah, when I when I say like back to like people being back in Star Wars, I mean I just mean that it's like a financially successful thing. You know what I mean? I think there's a certain percentage of fan base they're never going to get back with the current regime ever. Mm -hmm. I think it's set sail. I just don't think people care about the MCU characters as much as we care about Star Wars. No, I don't think so. In general, uh, not on an individual basis level. Because no, obviously good, uh... Mahler, Mahler really cares about uh, Ant Man. So oh man, he's I think about him every night. I can't believe what they did. Terrible. Mahler, House of the Dragon or Andor? What's the question? Like, which am I more interested in, or which, which do, do you I like more? House of the Dragon. I'm all about that hot D. Yeah, though Andor doesn't have the equivalent of an episode nine of House of the Dragon, which was fucking shit. So. I'm just saying, but Andor also didn't reach one that big thing. shit moment. I would say one big shit moment. No, the episode for the most part was shit. Uh, you don't from, like that entire episode? Yeah, yeah, dude. The the small council meeting was awful. Like I, I don't know. I was already annoyed at like several of the things that got said and done. Um, I don't care how accurate it is to like the source, but um, the killing of the uh, I forget Lord the Beesbury. 
Yeah, what they what he did to it that 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 was so awkward and stupid. Like, and it really annoyed me because it kind of like ruined any chances of the character having uh, an interesting arc instead of just he's becoming a goober who makes stupid decisions. Sorry, the name escapes me. I need to rewatch uh, House of the Dragon, especially before season two. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yes, the the big fucking golden crown stupid moment was what uh, Rainey's did. We don't care about all those people. <laughs> I have so nothing funny. to add. I haven't seen House of Dragon. I highly recommend looking into the website Star Wars Obscurities and Star Wars. They recommend previous... They document previous drafts and unused footage from 1 to 6. Really? That's kind of cool. Let's take a picture of that. Luke Avi also says, also, did you know that Harrison Ford's copy of A New Hope was auctioned off back in January? BBC News reported it. Yeah, I think it was like 10,000 pounds. Sold That's 10, heavy. B-Day tomorrow, Sabre live stream, live reviews. So end of March, man. End of March will be the full site launch. But I mean, right now you can go grab any of the five that we have up there. Um, the site only allows us for that. It allowed for three up until about like a week ago. And then now it's we can do five it's all in my programmer's hands so um it's uh we're making something extremely ex uh complex it's taking time a theory do you have uh all of your star wars celebration photos in picture frame um no one of them isn't not yet check out your F. Mary Kill, Crumb, Sebulba, and Babu Frick. Oh, man. Um, I feel like Marion Babu, he's a creative engineer. You know, we're, we're going places with him. Yeah. Yeah, we could. I would still probably fuck. Sal I'd still probably fuck Salacious Crumb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he just wants to fuck. Because you did. That was his. He didn't even do process elimination. He just went straight for Crumb, you know? He's just odd. Well, and I, I kill Saboba. I don't want to. I don't want to fuck Saboba, and I don't want to. I don't want to marry him. I feel like he'd be kind of abusive. So, um, <laughs> Saboba's just out of the running. <laughs> Crumb just the uh, the sexy side piece in every situ situation there. It, it, this Sub isn't about like I want to fuck Salacious Crumb. This is like if if asked know. the question. Mm -hmm. you know, Whatever you say, know. bud. I don't know. Can you guys make a good uh, Look salacious post me. on X or something like that for Ryan? Maybe him hugging Crumb at a fan meetup or something. Sandman throws Spider-Man, or was it Miles Morales caught being racist in 4K, Mauler getting clipped? Oh, shit. I should have said Pattaya Parquet versus Mille Morales. So you, it's all spoken in code. But no, I legit was, I can't remember what fucking happened in that cutscene. I just remember everyone sharing it. My favorite Miles Morales nickname is Peter Darker. Also, they he's marketed as Miles Morales everywhere. So, <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> How does Grogu have Force healing but can also use Force choke on Cara Dune? Because he's using the Force and he's not bound by the ideologies of the Jedi. He just Grogu's going to be a great face. Jedi. <laughs> Endgame review left us hanging. No, I didn't. Fringy made that review. I... If you watch Fringy's video, it's basically what I would have to say, but mine would have been like 10 times longer just because I'm me, but he's he covered it. Uh, and Endgame was like weird because I went from thinking it was like bad to or bad to okay to just <laughs> fucking one of the worst things in the MCU. So it was, <laughs> it, it's hard to like, whatever I made that video, it would change depending on like every month that passed by. And then eventually he made it. So I was fine with it. Oh man. Shark Rogers, if you think Jenny Talls is bad, just remember Whore from the Star Wars Fighter game, <laughs> Masters of Terras Cassi. Did you know Carrie Fisher helped writing a little bit of the animated film Anastasia? It's a film about a grand duchess of Russia. I didn't know that. I didn't know she helped. Anastasia's awesome. Carrie Fisher like did a lot of kind of like ghostwriting shit, from my understanding. Show me I, I, I already mentioned Ocean Man. It's a it's like an EFAP meme. 
Again, these things, they say this like, it's like a five second thing. To show you the full meme would take a while, all right? It's it's Ooh. lore. It's crazy lore. I'm convinced Admiral Akbar was uh, clapping Winter's cheeks. Um, for people yeah. that have read those books, you know. It's a slap. What's Palps the most powerful force user of all time? Uh, I it's I know, tough because I think initiate and Nihilus and it's like you don't know. Yeah, it's tough when you compare like power levels across like thousands and thousands of years. But Palpatine is like considered by many to be like the most powerful Sith Lord we've seen. And what about Omega. Omega unknown. We'll see what happens with Omega. She mm -hmm. definitely has potential. It's like her M count goes above Palpatine's. Obviously, if Anakin doesn't get fucking sliced and diced, uh, I think he's got something to say about that. But... Did you guys see Dune Awakening video game? No, I did not. No. I did not see it at all. My worthy of Uh Worm says, oh, that's a cute cat. Oh, orange eyes. Theory just received my mall saber. It's effing beautiful. Off to torture the kids now. Thanks. I'm so happy you got one, dude. So happy you're enjoying it. I love it. I think it's a fantastic piece. And, uh... I, I want to see an animation. Speaking of torturing kids, look at that thing. Hell yeah. yeah it's, it's a nice piece. I want to see. An... Which one do you want? Because I'm going to send you one once the full site's ready. I need to look. I need to look and decide and pick mine out. It's going to be fucking okay. awesome. Well, when the full site's ready, you can just look, look through the list of hundreds and choose what you want. That'd There's empty hills awesome. too. Yeah. Um, I, we need an animation when you guys were talking earlier and you gave the idea of like Mahler just boxing some little kid. I want a fucking animation of that. Just Mahler beating the shit out of some little kid in the mm -hmm. boxing ring. Yeah. Do you guys really think they will... Well, didn't that just happen with that that MMA fighter and uh, Sneeko. Sean Strickland? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? I did see that. He beat the shit out of him. Well, yeah, I mean... Just, like, spar, and then you just see, like, fully unloaded. Well, I, I, I think Sneeko knew what he was getting into. Yeah. And he fucking didn't go down, which is fucking pretty, uh, pretty honorable, even if he got the shit kicked out of you. I think Sean Strickland yeah. found it honorable he didn't uh, go down either. Do you guys think they will cancel Jedi 3 like the rest of the games? No, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. This makes too much money. I think they shifted a lot of the people that were working on the Mando game onto their shift them onto the Jedi game, right? Say that again? I think that they're... Um, aren't they shifting the people that were working on the Mandalorian yeah. game for Respawn? Aren't they shifting them to the Jedi game? Yeah, they're shifting them to the Jedi game and Apex Legends. Yeah. And uh, probably like EA games or something. Unboxing Dark Apprentice right now. So sick. I'm glad you like it, dude. I hope you find something when the full site's ready. And happy birthday, bro. Favorite Clone Wars episode, guys. Love the work. What's up, Normac? Uh, Bombad General. <laughs> uh, no, for real. What's your favorite? What would be your favorite? In terms, of, like, in terms of ones that I, the ones that I think about the most often, it's probably the Mortis, the Mortis arc. Me too. Um, I don't even know if I like it or not, but it's the ones that make me like think the most, and they're fucking wacky and weird. Yeah. Um, but I'm not a big TCW guy. Um, I don't like most of what I see. Um. So, Bombad General, it is. What's the one where uh, R2 and C3PO have to go get a cake for oh, Padme? Geez, I don't know. No idea. That'd be a, a, that'd be my second favorite. Yeah. Ryan wants the salacious be be whole. <laughs> <It's just> be whole. <laughs> How do you feel about the argument that the EU was too convoluted with conflicting books because it was so vast? Disney needed the reset for normies. What I'll say about that is that in the last oh. decade worth of storytelling from Disney, when they told us the focus was going to be on continuity and everything, we've seen more fucking errors in continuity in the last decade, despite a reset, than we did 
in the fucking 40 years prior. Uh, maybe not 40, but 30 years prior. Um, not to say there wasn't any conflicts. There certainly were. And some of those had to be smoothed over because, oh, a book that was set between episodes five and six that said one thing about Chewbacca's claws, but in reality, a book that had been written 15 years prior that was actually set eight years in the future. Leia saw those claws while he was climbing a tree, like things like that. Right. Um, mm. But <clears throat> I, I think the idea about like continuity and that's the reason we want a clean slate. Look at what they've fucking done with that. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Goku Naru made a very good video criticizing Sneeko. Okay. Check it out. It was wicked cool that you sent Wesley a lightsaber theory. Big shout out to you. I haven't sent it yet, so I don't want to come across as if I sent it yet. I'm waiting for the full sight to be done, and then I'm going to be sending him something that uh, I think he'll really like. First live in a while. Theory, I think Josh lied about why he left Nerd Theory. He used it to promote his comic. Once he reached his goal, he did you dirty. You don't say your BFFs with someone, then F them over. He lies all the time. Hey, well, we're, you know, I I got nothing to say about that, man. Uh, we had a good run, and uh, we now got an amazing show here with uh, with the boys, and I really love Hello. what we have going on. So, yeah. This would be a good time for me to promote my comic. Um, you can just share my screen. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I don't have a comic. Oh, I thought you were going to share your screen. Fucking loser. Oh, no, I don't. Um, but if I did, I would I would share my screen. For <laughs> Here's oh, where I promote man. my it, comic. Uh, yeah. If I had one, <laughs> if I had one, this is the this would be the opportune time. Yeah, I'd love for you to uh, share whatever you want to sell. No, I don't have anything. This is the only thing that brings me joy in life. Well, I'm glad it does. I think no. you said that last week, and I said I'm sorry that your life sucks that badly. <laughs> it's the boogie <laughs> meme. You guys <laughs> must accept the boogie meme. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, Nerd Theory was great while it was lasting, while it was on, and, uh, you know, things change, and he had to focus on his family and his comic, and uh, so, you know, we found a great show here, and that's that's awesome, so. I'm happy for the boys that are here now. Yes. Right. <sighs> Theory and Ryan, did you guys ever read the book titled The Glove of Darth Vader? It was an interesting concept. Much love. May the force be with you. We talked about that the other day a little bit. Uh, that weird fucking like Jedi Prince series or whatever. Um, it's I read it a long fucking time ago. I've never revisited it. It is kind of wild. Like the idea that on this hunt for the, the glove of Darth Vader that can actually produce lightning, but it was really like just a trick and it involves the someone who says they're the son of Palpatine and also an illegitimate son of Palpatine and somebody has a fucking third eye at the back of their head and shit. Kind of kind of wild. It was written in like 1992 or some shit. Mm. I didn't know that. I never knew about that book. Theory makes me so sad that when he just made that comic joke, you thought he was serious. That's how many times you have been screwed over. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you feel bad. What do you mean? I don't get it. He's he says he feels bad that when I made the joke about promoting my comic book, he thought I was serious. Yeah, so I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, I did. But I don't get it. He thinks you've been done dirty by people, Theory. And he's got yeah, your back. I have. Oh, well, thank you. Uh you guys see Boogie got his house vandalized by <laughs> his shaman. Yes. <laughs> we, talk, we, we talked about earlier. This, yes. Yeah, we talked about this like two hours ago. It, oh, with the oh, that, that was the guy whose name is Flaming Star. Provided him mushrooms and then betrayed him. <laughs> oh, Jesus, dude! I thought you said he provided you provided him like Dungeons and Dragons cards. It was Magic the Gathering. Magic the no, Gathering that's the whole. Of the, the The short vision is just his mushroom shaman has been vandalizing his house, which in and of itself is pretty hilarious. Interesting. This <laughs> Robin drug dealer. Hey, yo, I actually caught y'all rolling a bit late. You are. I just wanted to say love in the trio. Much love to Mahler and Ryan. 
Yeah, Chad, can we give the boys some love here? I mean, this show honestly wouldn't be what it is without them, and I'm just really happy it uh, it came together the way it is. So I think it's a pretty dope show. I think it's super unique, and I haven't seen a show like this out there. So The grift um, is taking over. Yeah, man. Don't awesome. forget. If you want to give awesome some hate, you're welcome as well. Well, yeah, we're good. That's right. That. We didn't have enough... Uh... We didn't have enough hate super chats. That shit just bounced yeah. out of us. Those one keep those keep me alive. If you can riddle the chat with hearts, we would love that. I'm sure the boys would too. And maybe uh, <laughs> some salacious bee crumb for Ryan. Yeah. That'd be great. Like a salacious bee crumb. Take what I can get. <laughs> Ryan's a bit of a hole. Bit of an a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> nice well we're gonna end it here on that that's the uh the super chats for this week we hit the three hour mark exactly as i said that leave a big like on the video stay here because i'm gonna now go play um hell divers 2 with you all so you won't even have to change the screen or anything you're gonna be teleported as soon as i end the stream my god have a fantastic day everyone we love you we appreciate you and uh we will see you next week when uh bye -bye. episode is, five guys episode five tomorrow and then episode six next week uh, well, no, I guess five tomorrow. And then also next week is um, Battlefront 2 comes out. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. What do you guys love think guys. of Star Wars movies by Jedi Outcast Jedi Academy not being by Disney since they'd screw it up? In principle, I'd love it. I think it'd be awesome. But like you said, not by Disney. Not by Disney. Love you guys. We'll see you later. Peace.